everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Roundtable Live! Hey! Woo! Hi! Woo. Welcome, Yay. folks. We're live on twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast for, uh, for the first time. We've done this before, but not in the actual podcast form. It's true. We've done the, you know, fun little roundtable podcast broadcast, which were not confusing in any way, right? That's, <laughs> everybody got that message straight out of the gate. So I'm I like them because they rhymed. That, that's true. <laughs> that I mean, that alone only feels reason. like the only factor that really matters in naming something to me. Mm. As long as you get like, a rhyme scheme going. Duck game was a good part of it for me when we played that. Oh, well, that didn't rhyme, though. No, so I like playing it, though. Mm. Well, you, you can make it rhyme pretty easily. <laughs> With some words. Fuck some game, some game. words. <laughs> we can't say. <laughs> We can't say them or we'll get the explicit mark on Twitch and then I have to check another oh, box. That. It's the yeah. kiss of death. I, I figured out how many how many little things it takes to get a Twitch channel running the way you need it to. It takes a long time. That's one of those checkboxes, along with seven others I had to tick. I, I counted seven checkboxes necessary to make Twitch Roundtable Podcast a full-fledged thing. I know. Yeah. Somebody feel bad for me, please. On today's docket, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, though, and it's relevant, believe it or not. It's timely and, you know, topical. Candy Crush, the, uh, the makers of Candy Crush, have been purchased for an obscene amount of money. We're also going to be talking about how Arkham whoa, Knight... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? I don't want to be wealth-shaming anybody. There could be people <laughs> watching this for whom $6 billion is just, like, par for the course. They just drop that on a weekend on uh, alcohol. Magic the Gathering. I think I think there are eight people who who that label applies to. <clears throat> Not just like listening, but total ever in, no, in, all in the course of human history. All here. <laughs> That'd even, be great. Uh, even Notch doesn't apply. No, yeah, I don't think he's in that. I don't know. Would six billion dollars be pocket change for Notch? That's an interesting question. We'll have to talk about that during the Candy Crush segment. Also, new Rocket League content on the way, and they're talking about doing an event in an arena. Which is wow. incredible. That sounds awesome as shit, so we want to talk about that. Also, uh, Epic Games an hour ago just announced a new game called Paragon, and the only reason I'm bringing that up is because I can. That's what's fun. Topical. Yeah, I love it. Uh, then we're going to be talking about a couple of games, Kingdom and Downwell, and then, of course, there's going to be the Afterbirth discussion. It will happen. Not, okay, the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. Yeah. I keep having to do that, and I wish Don't I didn't Google have to. Don't Google it for thumbnails. Mm -hmm. I tried. <laughs> and well. Don't do it. They're not really being very SEO friendly with this one, are they? They're, <laughs> they're kind of going out of the limb there. Uh, but that the is... Next, the one is just going to be called the Binding of Isaac Pictures of mother. John F. Kennedy. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> <right. laughs> <laughs> John F. Kennedy, or The Binding of Isaac, uh, the Zapruder film. Mm hmm Or uh, the Serbian one. That's the other terrible Oh, that's one, the right? other. There's Binding a lot of, of films. Isaac, the Serbian one. <laughs> <laughs> also a new Call of Duty game coming in fall. Is that? Oh, yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, no, the, Serbi the Serbian one. Oh, yeah. The Call of Duty, Duty, the Serbian one. Oh, my God. That would be... I would buy that based on name alone. <laughs> if they can make it rhyme, that would certainly be, you know, like, pushing me over the edge. Serbian fun. Serbian Lurbian. Lurbian with the Serbian Call of Duty. I should stop this train. Mm. Let's talk about Candy Crush. Candy I mean, Crush. Okay. To. Candy Crush is a match three game. Yes. About candy. King Digital. Mm. The company responsible for Candy Crush and many, many other mobile games as well. I shouldn't just limit them to that because obviously they've, they've found can, brimming success in a marketplace like this. Can you name three other than Candy Crush? Oh, see, now you, you got me on the spot here. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Uh, they've got Candy Crush Saga. Uh, that does, that Candy is Crush candy Soda crush. Series. Uh, that's still Candy, candy crush. crush Butterscotch Edition. He's trying, though. <laughs> He's, I, mean, he, I give him that. There is an effort being put forward. <laughs> Uh, they had, I no, I actually knew one of them off the top of my head, but it, it was, uh... Farm Heroes. They've made, yeah, Farm Heroes actually might be one of them, yeah, I think Farm that's... Farm Heroes Saga, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sounded like it. Do they make their titles with the South Park manatees with the balls that just move across the tank? Doesn't and it they seem like together? that a little bit, yeah. They've got... Yeah, they've got a lot of properties, these guys. Actually, Candy Crush only makes up a third of their total revenue, so it's not like they're really? a one-hit wonder either. Yeah, they've got a lot of stuff going on. I think they've got, like... Well, they've got three of the top ten grossing games on the App Store right now, which is obviously huge. And then, uh, you know, just Candy Crush in general has kind of spawned a whole bunch of other stuff. This 
a Wikipedia article is the smallest one I've ever seen for a company worth six billion dollars. <laughs> Their entire article is basically like they make like iOS games. <laughs> That's about it. So I went. I, I went to King.com, and yeah. it, like all of their games are match three. Oh so yeah, no, that doesn't surprise Candy me. Crush, Bubble Witch, Pet Rescue, Diamond Digger. It's all just the same exact game with new skins. Man, just going the most here now. Most expensive DLC skin packs of all time. Exactly. <laughs> just exactly. going here now. You mentioned this page, like I. I'm looking at the figure. So first of all, we should mention the, the story here is that the Candy Crush developers, King Digital, have been purchased by Activision for $5.9 billion. Nearly Wait, $6 what? billion. You said a B with a B there. A B. Yeah. Oh, a B sound. A big B with a huge yeah. B. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just for, okay, just for the sake of comparison, this is taken directly from a BBC article, so I won't li act like I did the research for this at Forefront. Microsoft purchased Mojang, the creator of Minecraft, yes. for two point five billion. That was a couple of years ago, yeah. but well, two point five billion. Well, that's not a very popular billion. game, clearly. So. No, yeah, there's not a big audience for that one. <laughs> uh, you know, Facebook took over Oculus for about two billion. That's not exactly a direct comparison, but it's something to keep in mind. But an another pretty big one that is pretty re pretty relevant to this purchase: EA bought PopCap for seven hundred fifty million. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, doesn't that that one freaks you out a little bit, right? That one, that one is like, whoa, this is now oh. on an entirely different scale. With PopCap only being valued at seven fifty, if you just base it on the transaction alone. The, the subtext here in my head, and maybe I'm off on this, but I believe Bejeweled was the originator of the modern form of the Match Three game, right? I, With, yeah, I mean, you kind of have to say that, right? There's not really anything else that ha so, holds the water in that realm as much as Bejeweled does. To kind of end up going down that line where then later on this company that sold for that amount sort of took a derivation of another person's idea and mm -hmm. made so much more off it is very strange to me. It's a tough... I mean, the, the idea of, you know, like being the pioneer of the match three is probably going to be kind of impossible too, right? To actually make well, that claim. I mean, but to the modern mainstream version of mm -hmm. it that we understand it to be now. I think what King Digital done has made... They've made match three into something that disguises it as a more universal match three candy right? yeah candy everyone loves but, candy wait but they I, don't like jewels i've literally <laughs> jewels. actually never seen anybody play candy crush really but so here's it was oh yeah go ahead no please here's my understanding of it from seeing people talk about it on facebook and twitter mm -hmm. it's a match three game but it's not about high scores right like it's about you beat levels and then progress through the game. Right. But you can also buy help. Mm -hmm. Like, that's yeah. where they make their money. Is you can be like, oh, this level's too hard. I'll just pay a dollar and beat it. Yeah. yeah it's basically exactly what well, it you is. Can it buy, was, okay. you can buy, like, more lives. Uh, okay, so here's, here's how I understand how Candy Video Crush game. works right now. They've got, they've got a system where you lose a life. and Okay, so you have, like, five lives in your stock. And okay. then when you lose a life, it takes 30 minutes to replenish that life oh, so you can try again. That. Yeah, no, that, it's the classic mobile game design, right? Like, it's that's the genius trap. in that you can gain more lives by getting your friends to join mm -hmm. and, like, help you. Oh so you God. spread the game it's via being, like, it's what was happening. humanly possible. Yeah. yeah. It's genius because it, it, it nets them. The company makes, like, $1.5 billion a year, I believe. Is, 2.26 is billion was their project, or was their uh, reported revenue in 2014. So it's just... Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of money. So mm. they're making an investment that they are at least hopefully get back in a couple of years. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And this, but, yeah, I mean, smart. first of all, this company has been around for a while. They were founded in 2003. So it's not like they're, you know, all of a sudden just cashing in. They've been doing right. this stuff for quite some time. And I think that shows, you know, like I think with the fact that they have 1,400 employees for a company whose primary service is Candy Crush, mm -hmm. like that's kind of impressive. I think this is... Just an organization that understands how to exploit this model right now way better than anyone else. <laughs> Two point two six World of Warcraft crush soon. It's not yeah. sustainable though, right? Yeah. That, okay. So that's the that's other part of the conversation, <laughs> right? You know, you look at this and you look at um, Zynga, whose stock price started at like fifteen dollars when they went public, and now is worth like two thirty or mm -hmm. something, like two dollars and thirty cents to be fair, and. Um, you know, uh, Zynga also buying OMG Pop for like 
230 quadrillion dollars. So it, an unfathomable amount of money. Mm. And then later, like, firing everybody that right. they bought from that. <laughs> and you're just like, man, you know, there, there are very smart people working at Activision, I'm sure, because they're huge. But uh, you, you look at this and you can't help but feel like nobody's going to be playing Candy Crush in two years. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, important but, to note as well that this is Activision Blizzard that made this purchase. Yeah. So this is a very specific brand. Candy Crush has already been around for a goddamn long time. People have been playing Candy... I remember working at Cheesecake Factory, what, three or four years ago, mm -hmm. and everybody was playing Candy Crush like on their break or between you know tables or whatever it was and this is like four years ago and it's still making them billions today I mean if they because can keep people ubiquitous. hooked if they just it's keep just... it going it doesn't matter right they're still gonna make the money it's been around it hasn't gone anywhere I think just because it's so well known it just keeps propagating itself indefinitely Right? Well, yeah, it's but... just sort of like the mobile game that people get. Yeah. Well, I think the problem with Zynga and the reason why I don't think Zynga is a, a fair comparison necessarily because Zynga was Farmville, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was Facebook. Mm -hmm. You had to be That's on Facebook correct. to yeah. do it. These are on your mobile phones. Like mm. everybody has a mobile phone. Everybody's playing these on their break at work or wherever they have 10, maybe their 10 minute coffee break, they're playing it or whatever. I think it, it's, it's hard to compare them when the other one required you to be on Facebook on a PC. So let's compare it then to, like, Rovio, I guess. So Rovio, the company behind Angry Birds, which was, as you mentioned, the the game that people downloaded on their phones, right? So that's kind of what has been the, the phase of all these big purchases. Rovio wasn't ever bought by anyone, but they, you know, were operating at a pretty substantial profit yeah. for a well, long time. Well, as of 2013, they were making a measly 156 million euros well, a year. Pff, okay, yeah, so maybe they're not so high up there anymore. <laughs> not two, that's not a 2.2 .2 billion that King makes, actually. Yeah. They're, they're no longer the people who to six or six billion dollars is a drop in the bucket to that we were right, wor worried exactly. about earlier on. And they've been around since 2003 as well, so they're probably like, oh, hmm. what are we dragging our heels here? Yeah. We've no. only had four feature-length films based on our <laughs> physics-based platformer games. Did you see the trailer it's for the Angry Birds movie? Yeah. I saw the trailer for the it new looks... Angry Birds movie, and I was like, this is <laughs> fucking trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know it's not for me, but you know, you see a trailer for like a Pixar movie, and you're like, That's, that looks great. And yeah. then you see yeah. this, and you're like, oh. Uh, you're I'd like, rather the, watch the Grumpy Cat movie, honestly. The voice actors just sound like they're just like, where's my paycheck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Which is, you know, enjoy. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But with Rovio, I mean, uh, it's it really is predicated on the that idea of being the dominant player on the mobile space. Because we're only hearing about these stories from the companies that are making the number one sellers. So it's kind of like a PewDiePie situation again, where you hear all these yeah. stories like, oh, he's making billions of dollars doing this crazy thing. It's like a, such an easy cash-in. No, these are the best these are the number one players in the in the game like that are you know cashing in pretty hard on this so rovio did that with angry birds and they continue to do that with angry birds angry birds is still up there angry birds is still doing pretty well but it's no longer like the billions upon billions of dollars that it probably was a few years ago oh, now, dude what's up look at this sentence this this passage i know i'm off in like no man's land here <laughs> angry this bird movie land the angry birds yeah. movie Production tab on Wikipedia. The film's budget is estimated at $80 million. No big deal. Mm. In addition, Rovio and Sony Entertainment will spend $100 million on marketing. Whatever. Um, this would make it the largest budget in the film industry in Finland. Blah, blah, blah. Despite the massive budget, Rovio's CEO stated, It's the only thing about this company I don't lose any sleep over. And it's tremendously strong as a story. In August 2015, Rogio, Rovio announced that they were expecting to cut 250 jobs, a.k.a. 40% of the company. The only sector spared from the job cuts are personnel working on the movie. What? Whoa! <laughs> what? That, that sentence is, is like very a, revealing. That's the, interesting. The story is strong. Yeah. It's an all-in moment, man. The, man. the birds are angry. There's reasons. <laughs> There's a plot. He's turning this into a film franchise in his mind. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna. The game set a, sector is done. Yeah, we're cutting it. It's You're all about the movies the movie. now. Yeah, we hired you eight months ago. <laughs> Everybody else is gone. What if the birds are just angry because it's a projection of the CEO's psyche? Ooh, <laughs> oh, now maybe it's he's deep. the angry one. Yeah, we started talking about Candy Crush, but really, That's we the, knew no, where dude, we were that going is with the this. next big game. Angry CEO. 
<laughs> that would be good. He's just Why can't I make enough money? Hurl him at his peons that are just standing on their desks trying not to cry and shit themselves. <laughs> That's how I was whenever my CEO was around. I, I never really got any confidence in the professional atmosphere. Yeah, I was just constantly shitting myself. I couldn't hold down a job because I was just oh, I was just taking a dump wherever I went, man. I yeah. just I didn't have any control. A rough life. So the okay, so we touched on this point of the conversation, but is this a sustainable thing? Is the question, obviously. So for this to be a good purchase by Activision Blizzard, they obviously have to get a return on their investment, right? But their investment is six fucking billion dollars. That's so much money. That is a ridiculous amount of money. And that must mean that there's like what is what is going to be the next candy crush from King Digital that we don't know about? Like, wh what are they going to do over the next year or two that's going to make this worthwhile to Activision? I have I no mean, idea. The, it seems unfathomable I mean, to yeah, imagine. Yeah. I can't really come up that's with anything. That's the question about mobile games, right? Is the idea right now is that one you basically come out with something and it's an unfathomable success. Mm -hmm. And then... Repeating it is the hard part because it's literally like 80 games come out every day on iOS. Yeah, yeah. and you you got to be the one that stays at number one for like six months or two years to to justify something like this. So, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they and can I mean, make another match three that is iterative and and people like it as well. But you you know you look at Zynga and you're like, hey, man, they didn't like repeat their success very well at all. Yeah. No, yeah. Not at I all. don't imagine there's much loyalty either amongst customers of those particular brands or companies, right? You well, know, that's, the yeah. that's the other part of it, too, care. is that there's probably not a lot of loyalty, but they do have the marketing power of owning and controlling three of right. the top ten grossing games. So, like, they'll right. just, all they'll have to do if they want to make something, a new IP, kind of the same degree of success, or at least try to, is just plug in little adverts for it in the Candy Crush Saga games and just say, like, yep. hey, remember... How much you like yeah. this? Well, we've got a new thing called fucking eat your dicks, and you get to match up <laughs> oh, three dicks. Oh, I love that game. And you get the so mouth good. there, and you get a munch, 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 and then you and get you points. munch, munch, munch. Mm -hmm. Then you munch, munch, munch. You you're right. You'll win. You munch. Mm -hmm. There is an element we're not discussing though, and that's we don't know the exact specifications of their monetization for Candy Crush, and there is a possibility that they've generated years worth of metadata about their customers mm -hmm. mm, that has a true. large bearing on okay. why that valuation is so yeah. high. This is, you see, you're thinking on your feet here. This is the smart... You're thinking well, I think this here. is like the real story, yeah, not really no, what we were right. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we got all this bullshit speculation, but yeah, that actually does make a lot more sense. So they're they're not buying King Digital. They're buying King Digital's data, basically, is what you're saying. That is a good point. Yeah, they brought they have. Let's see if they've got numbers here. Actually, I'm sure they've got you numbers. You said they're from 2003, so that's a lot of years if they're accumulating customer base information. Yeah, and just that. Well, I guess okay. So here's uh, Mr. Mr. Zaccone, who I believe is the CEO of King Digital. He says. Since 2003, we have built up one of the largest player networks on mobile and Facebook with 474 million monthly active users in the third quarter of 2015. That's, yeah. that's like one out of every 12 people on Earth. <laughs> How many did you say? I'm telling you, man. 400, 400 million? This is not registered users. This is 474 million monthly active users in the third yeah, quarter of 2015. That's so many people. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the, the scheme in which they have people share the game is genius. It's like... You could pay for an extra life, or you could share it with friends mm -hmm. and get free lives that way. And it's like that's that doesn't that's just make you want to vomit. <laughs> it it, it oh does, them, but no, it makes them money, is what it does. It no, a lot of money. <laughs> vomit sorry. money. Sorry, Vom sorry. Yeah, sorry. the game mm. vomits money. It really does. Every like I said, I just remember in Cheesecake Factory, everybody was playing like everyone from the managers to the bartenders to the servers to the cooks. They were all playing Candy Crush. All the time. They should, like, do their job sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. Maybe those Cheesecake Factory employees should get a real job, like, reporting right? on yeah. these stories, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous, though. Like, Candy Crush was everywhere. Yeah. And I'm assuming it's still very similar if 474 million people are playing oh, it a month. I assumed that the curve with Facebook would go down just as hard, but apparently not. No, I guess. I mean, oh... First of all, I'm pretty sure Facebook is kind of starting to, you know, die off a little bit as far as everything is concerned. I think they're, you know, going the way of MySpace in the next few years here. That's that's you. my personal projection, but that might I might be entirely wrong. I go to Facebook for the top-notch political commentary of my mm -hmm. friends. Oh, yeah, it's good oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> and, like, 
yeah, ads. Good stuff, really. And yeah, well, yeah. I like to be served ads on Facebook. I love to sell my data to anyone who wants it at any point, <laughs> anywhere. I like that whenever one of my friends likes a video, it shows up on my mm -hmm. feed. Yeah. So it'd be like, wow, check out this like super nice guy. And he like buys a homeless dude lunch and then they eat. And I'm like, oh, that's touching. Yeah. Well, oh no, that, that, that actually sounded like genuine and sincere now. That We're just really like, that's shit. what I, I fucking got you. <laughs> I hate that shit. <laughs> I just like the shit that pops up on your feed. It's like, you will probably like this. Yeah. And it's just like uh, one of those community pages of yeah. like the funniest vi past 10 vines of the week. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't need this. I Thanks, hate BuzzFeed. This. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Top exactly. six vines about cockroaches. Who do you think is the best cockroach? Vote now. Keeping in mind, Bear is like the face of top. Or yeah, trending, exactly. So. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> you know. don't, don't compare that to Facebook videos. I think we no. hold ourselves to a certain standard, and that's not the one. Well, I think, I think Activision's gonna do okay. What do you guys think? You think they'll King be all right? Sellouts. Yeah. I think they sold out at the exact right moment before they yeah. wouldn't be able to make that amount of money ever again. Yeah, mm. I, I would have done the same thing. How, how could you not, right? Yeah. How, right? It's obviously, like, without being super rude, it's a company that doesn't give a shit about, like, their design vision. Yeah. yeah. Why, if someone comes to you and says, hey, we'll give you $6 billion, <laughs> Isn't that the end game? I'm worth like seven. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like instead of waiting five years to make six billion dollars, we could just make it like very soon? Yeah. Okay, like that's. Then After again, though, I a mean, a couple billion a year. Yeah, that's a, that's a valid point. Honestly, like you think about that when you're a company that's making two point two billion dollars a year, maybe five point nine is not like an instant right. sell number. You know? I like, don't know, man. Just keep it on the back <laughs> well, it's, it, they're just trading the, the future speculation versus the immediate and going, well, how long do we think we can make this amount of money? We well, got to get out while we're on top. Yeah, exactly. Like, just think about if we boiled this down to say you ran a company that was making, you know, $226,000 a year in, in uh, revenue, which okay. obviously Thank you, is you bread. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is obviously not that huge, but then you look at it and it's like, okay, if I'm making $226,000 a year and somebody offers to give me, uh, a yeah, a million dollars, then that's not immediately like, uh, you know, snap, oh, I, I'm going to do that, right? And I'm, I mean, obviously, there's a big difference between that and literally four billion dollars of extra yes. money. But <laughs> <laughs> the big I mean, difference there is that, you know, every single like couple of million that you add to that means never having to work again for mm -hmm. one more person. Right. And there is yeah. 30,000 two million dollar increments involved in six billion dollars. Yeah. So I don't know. A little bit of a de devil's advocate there play, maybe, I guess. But uh, it's. Yeah, I think it's pretty easy. So six billion dollars sold. Got it. We're There's done. nothing you could not pay me six billion dollars for. <laughs> there are, there are like yeah. ex outside of like killing myself or my family or my friends, mm. harming anyone. You know, I'm not even gonna say killing anybody. Let's say like killing a. Ki I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't kill a stranger. For How $6 far do you want to go with this, man? This but might, if I if I knew somebody was this is uh, on the internet, man. You know, <laughs> they already made a emails. movie about this. Northern Lion gets a box in the mail. He hits a button. He gets a million dollars. Someone exactly, randomly yeah. in the world dies. He doesn't he even need a billion. Six, six billion. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call like, it the six billion dollar button, man. They call it. The, you telling me you wouldn't press the button for a million? I probably wouldn't press the button for a million. Yeah, oh, that's. Nobody Not in this day and age. Maybe back what in the if, 80s. What if What if I pushed the button and it killed me? Having seen no, the movie, I wouldn't push the button. But had oh, I yeah, not seen so. the movie ahead of time, I it's might about consider like, it. Uh, it's like an alien thing, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's like a. It, it's some otherworldly force. I don't want to spoil yeah. this movie that I don't remember the name of, but I <laughs> the remember the entire box. plot of. Oh, okay. Since you were a small child, they have introduced this concept of the monkey paw. If anyone gives you a good deal, you always get skeptical immediately. That's the trick. Yeah, That's I, actually like a really good cautionary tale for real life. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I if anyone's totally like, practice that. Hey, free trial, fucking free samples, be careful. Mm -hmm. If I'm at Costco and they're like, hey, you want to try this? I'm like, back the fuck up. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't want to admit to anything incriminating here, so I'll just say I have a friend who sometimes watches online NFL streams, <laughs> and uh, I have to recognize that when I'm, when I'm checking this stuff out, there will often be streams that are like, you know, 1080 HD direct satellite feed broadcast, totally free, and I'm like, 
great. Really, Elliot. Admit it. Yeah, <laughs> but something's happening here that I don't know about that I'm going to be paying for later on. But for now, I'm going to enjoy. You mean it. your friend will be? I mean, my it. friend will be enjoying this high quality free NFL right. live stream. Yeah. That free key logger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, man, that's just a. I don't know. It's just a crazy story. I can't believe. I can't believe there is a company that makes mobile games that is valued at six billion dollars. That's just five point nine billion. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sure that is a hundred million priority. dollars. I should make that clear. Yeah. Crushing candy. That's what's important to us as a society. <laughs> Man. You know, in uh, two thousand. Wait, wait. How am I even reading this? What's up? Okay. This is 1980. I don't want the video game industry total income in 1982. <laughs> it's like 10 bucks. It was, well, it was actually like 11.8 billion in Jeez. 1982. Well, 1982, wow. Game, video games industry in 2013 was 70.4 billion. There you go. Man. Activision's acquisition of King. Is equivalent to ten percent of the entire industry. Oh my god! For one year, that's nuts. King yeah. Digital was making like four percent of all yeah. game revenue. You're not wrong. That's insane. They didn't even have to put up radio towers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that was that was that was neatly slid in there. I like that. All right. So Batman's still broken, everybody. I just want to let you guys know. Has anyone here actually it checked it out since the the re-release, or are we just kind of like you, you too late? I'm right? Going off was, articles, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's off articles. I was very, one of the very lucky ones where it ran perfectly on my PC. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember I you playing it quite a bit, huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I got I got lucky, but I know like it's broken for most people. Yeah. So Warner Brothers is offering full refunds by the end of the year, by the way. PSA, if you own the game on Steam, you can get a full refund if it's not working at all for you. So there's that. But they can't, they've <clears throat> sort of just given up on it now, it seems. Well, they didn't give up. They added a bunch of DLC. Oh, okay. So that's about the same thing. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> did they really? No, they did not. They didn't. Yeah, like... no, they did. I tweeted a wall of DLC. It was a bunch of shit all in the same day. Was that recently? Yeah, it was like a week ago. No, God. Oh, that sucks. I, just felt, <laughs> I, didn't I was even just know looking that. through Steam new releases, and I was like, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, shit, that's all Batman that's stuff. That's Arkham Knight all... stuff? Yeah. Oh, my God, I have to look at this now. Okay, hold on. The Ar Arkham Knight has new DLC, because that's Yeah, kind of it's like all the old Batman movies. I didn't skins. know that you guys didn't know that. I thought that was No, I had no idea. So the, the game went off the, the shelves, the yeah. digital shelves, for a long time. And the, the promise was by sometime in the immediate or near future, we were going to patch this so that it works for everyone. Yeah. And then we're going to move on forward with our heads held high and, and go into the new realm of digital distribution strong. Mm -hmm. The reality is what happened is that they just put the game back on, patched it in about two weeks or so, and that's about as much as they could change in terms of fixing things. Yeah, uh, and this then is just unfixable problems. The big change was that they added a bunch of UI elements that allow you to buy things. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of costume packs, essentially. Yeah, there's one like story element. I think, they've got right? a matter of family. Stuff. That's the DLC, I imagine. And then there's the mm -hmm. Harley Quinn story pack as well. There, there are like 15 DLC items. Jesus Christ! A couple of two dollar things, Crime Fighter challenge packs, Bat Family skin pack. And they had the <laughs> the requirements were like 12 gigs of RAM or something, if I remember. <laughs> skin it's pack broken. is a weird. That's a weird sell, isn't it? Bat family skin pack. <laughs> it just doesn't feel right when you say it. I'm going to click on that. Uh, let me buy my... Hold, hold on, honey. Let me buy this pack of skins. <laughs> Be downstairs soon. <laughs> oh, it's good to be in the Bat family. It is. So, yeah, it's still... I mean, that's unfortunate, man. That is just... They're, <clears throat> they're actually problems that they cannot fix, which is... I don't know, it's, just, it's like a very difficult concept for me to grasp. Especially for a company of Warner Brothers size and caliber, you yeah. know? Like, that. that is a daunting idea, that Warner Brothers well, actually can't fix the problems. No, isn't it just, it's like, it's always possible to fix, but the, the, they're putting the resources versus what they think they can do in a certain amount of time, and they're mm -hmm. saying, well, it's not worth it to us to fix it. They'd have to spend more to fix it than they would to just leave it. True. But now Real we have to would return their investment. Yeah. 
We have to think about like where where they must have left off when they put it back on the store, though, right? It was like where were they in the process of trying to fix things when they put it back up whenever it was like last week, right? Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it just depends on how much of a mess the third party developer left them because what they took it back into first party hands after mm-hmm. they took it off the Steam thing, and clearly what, whoever was porting it over did so in like two weeks. Yeah, it's just that broken. So I'm I'm curious. I I know very little about coding. Uh, I'm very curious what kind of mess they're dealing with. Because the other Batmans worked well, like Arkham. I think Arkham City was actually kind of a little bit of a buggy mess when it launched, but over the course of a week or two, it was you know like a typical Bethesda release essentially worked out the bugs, worked fine. Yeah. Um, but this is just not even close to that, and I don't know why. I'm very curious why that's the case. Well, we had the conversation when this initially was happening, when Arkham yep. Knight had come out, and we yeah. were all just completely baffled that, you know, like how many things were wrong with it. But <laughs> how does this happen? Yeah. Basically? <laughs> and then, I mean, it kind of is just is happening again after they acknowledge and try to repair these problems, which. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a little silly, I know, but Ryan. Yeah. You being the only one among us who has any, you know, a, a modicum of programming experience. I don't like where this is going. You don't like this going. <laughs> I, okay, I know. I, I, I recognize that this you are not a, a seasoned game developer <laughs> with yeah. multiple AAA, AAA releases <laughs> under your belt. But just think about like in, in terms of you know like how how broken a game can be to mm. want to you know like how I, I don't even know what question I'm trying to formulate here. Honestly, it's just like does this is there a, a reason that you can suspect would you know like cause all these issues or like that would result in just sort of a, a fuck it mentality at this stage with without like coming to wb's side i would say just like you know making games is pretty hard mm-hmm. which is i mean it's a big complex project with like hundreds of people working on it and you know you're you're doing qa for like an incredibly broad spectrum of you know, Windows versions and service packs and hardware, hardware configurations, blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know, people are trying to play your game on PCs that are like, you know, a Chromebook from like 2009. And then people are trying to play it on like a, an enthusiast PC that's really strong. At the same time, like if any, well, not if any company, because there is King. But if, uh, <laughs> if there are groups of companies that should be able to QA test properly like that and, yeah. and develop those, it should be a company with the resources of WB. So... It, it's mostly just, um, it, it's still pretty unfathomable, I guess. Yeah. Especially considering that this is also like the fourth one in the franchise. Like, It's weird that it happened on. now, right? That's, <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about that too. Like, It's very strange that after multiple successful releases and, well, okay, so they got, you know, the, the handling of the ports and all the different intricacies of changing over staff and developers, you know, maintaining franchises. I'm sure there was some... There were some things that got swept under the rug as far as all that went, but you know now it's now it's boiled down to Warner Brothers issuing statements that say we apologize that people continue to be unhappy with the PC version of Batman Arkham Knight. That's like, yo, sorry if you got offended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna apologize for what I said. Yeah. You know, we're sorry people yeah. are upset. We're not sorry that we upset people. Mm. We're sorry that you're upset. But they are, I mean, That's okay, to, to, to offer them the olive branch, too, as well. They all are completely complying and offering people full refunds for the game. So Till the end of the year, right? Yeah, till the end of the year. So you've got, you've got plenty of time. If it's still not working for you and you were bummed out by that, then you, you can get it fixed. And uh, it's still just broken and probably will be forever so that's sad i think that was kind of the the decision we ended up on the first time we talked about oh, it too right we just my, sort of my cynical guess at what was going to happen was we we're going to take this off shelves until around this point mm-hmm. uh, and they were going to try and make a big splash when it came back and say this is the new the new batman black edition yeah and we're going to yeah. couple in a bunch of dlc to say we're sorry and then also you can buy more dlc yeah and then all of a sudden it'll have an increased presence because now it's the holiday season so they kind of didn't really hit that, but they still offered the DLC, but they also offered the refunds, so it's a little bit scattershot yeah. about how they landed there. It's a pretty good prediction, though, more or less along yeah. the lines of how things Close, played out. You know, you didn't nail it with the Black Edition, but I think you got I'd it. I'd rather that it just worked, Yeah, honestly. Yeah, that would be Batman, preferable. Batman, Bat Family, Skin Edition. <laughs> I really like that. 
I feel like the the industry moves so fast right now, though, that like I mean, it came out in May or something, right? I think it was, it was I think June. July June. or oh, no, yeah. I think it's June. And I, I feel like just nobody gives a shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe it's just because it's November and there's like you know Fallout Four is just right. eclipsing everything right now. Yeah, but that's the hype train is heading towards the Fallout. It, Fallout I feel like I'm like Batman Arkham Knight. Didn't that come out like eight years ago or something like that? <laughs> like I I just don't care at all now. But yeah, I you're like right. Maybe we should slot it in right after Assassin's Creed and in case that bombs really hard again. Nobody will <laughs> notice if we're back on the shelves. Assassin's Creed, yeah. Syndicate is what the second worst selling game of the franchise. Yeah, I mean, in, in that same regard too. Speaking of things that I consider easily forgettable. Mm, yeah. Assassin's Creed Syndicate just Syndicate. like fucking have we moved on like, already right by yeah it just kept on going it, it was approaching and then it, it never on. stopped it just Bring, kept moving they're on their <laughs> bike, their bell they wave they yeah. keep going yeah exactly Bye, I, I heard it wasn't year. like I heard it wasn't bad <laughs> yeah but there was just no, no desire for me Assassin's to play mm -hmm. yeah that's hey. I'm just like I, I've had enough of like you know parkour and fist fights like that's yeah. I'm okay for a little while. <laughs> I got you a come back copy. to me in a year or so, but maybe. I got a free copy because I bought a graphics card, so I'm going to probably try it. Mm -hmm. And I'll check it's it. Fun. Later. Yeah, it's it's seriously, it's pretty good. But I it just, it is but nowhere near as uh, meaningful anymore. It's just it's more the same. But and Isn't it cool to walk around London, or is that not a big deal? You know, it's just like, okay, it's, another it's London. Place. Yeah, it's just another I'm Assassin's Creed place. I feel I like it's... Um, it's like the Harlem Globetrotters or something. Like, you just wait until Assassin's Creed does a game in your city, and then you get yeah. excited. <laughs> like, when people were doing, like, when, when Syndicate was announced, people that I know from the UK were like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Like, you suckered me into this one. Yeah. I was just like, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. If they yeah. did, like, an Assassin's Creed Toronto or something, I would be like, I'll, I'll check it out. <laughs> Famous assassin in Toronto. What it's coming to my city, man. <laughs> It's like it's, future Mirror's Edge, I guess. That's when you finally come around and acknowledge that Desmond finally gets his own game or something. Right. Oh, yeah. Desmond goes to New York. <laughs> Desmond, Desmond goes to New York. <laughs> Desmond oh my does God. New York. It's like a fucking straight to DVD release for <laughs> Assassin's <laughs> Creed. <laughs> spoilers, spoilers. Desmond's been dead for a while. Oh, Mathis? Oh. What is your problem? Fire He's Mathis. He's been dead since Revelation. You spam, can't talk about that here. Spam the Fire <laughs> Mathis emote in chat that we don't have yet that we'll have one day. <laughs> now. Wow. Uh, Out of a cannon into the sun. Shit. I'm just out, so it's over. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Dude, I my, I guess with Assassin's Creed, my problem is it's like they they kind of initially created that rhythm based combat, then Batman perfected it, and yeah. they're now Assassin's Creed is just like never as good as Batman combat. But Batman's broken, so now we have to play Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Well you yeah, that's well on the PC. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna play it on console, just play Batman. Yeah, if you're on console by the way for Arkham Knight, then you probably already beat it and you had a great yeah. time. Why are they talking about this old ass game? <laughs> We're all PC elitists. Uh, you know, I'm glad that I moved out of Salt Lake City then, because I think Assassin's Creed Seattle is probably a lot more likely than Assassin's Creed Salt Lake City. Well, they already have it, you. right? It's uh, infamous. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. And Boston's yeah. getting Fallout. Boston's yeah, getting Assassin's Fallout, shooter. Creed takes other forms than just Assassin's Creed, doesn't There's it? There's a lot of Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> <laughs> you got Infamous. Yeah. You got Assassin's Creed Mordor. You got Prototype. Prototype mm -hmm. Crackdown. <laughs> <Yep>. Assassin's, Creed. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Mordor was actually really fun for me. I don't know it why. It was the best of the recent Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> They, oh, because they had that nemesis system in it, which actually did change it up a bit. Yeah, and at least they made like the tower climbing a little bit more meaningful in Assassin's Creed Mortar as opposed to just being another little unlock thing. Yeah. yeah. Ezio nice. looked weird, though. Yeah. He'd been working out. Assassin's Creed <laughs> Pirate Edition was really fun. You know, I, I, I'll I'll come to bat for Black Flag, I'll be honest. That Me game too. was pretty good. I, re I really like Black Flag. They wanted a full-on, though, pirate game. Like, it's true, yeah. Didn't they make it for Vita? I they did thought do, there was like a spin-off. They did a PS3, like a pre PS3 generation oh. exclusive one the called Rogue? Rogue that was more like nautical mm -hmm. focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to keep track of all the releases of that game. I really feel like we're in like an alternate reality. In the real timeline, Assassin's Creed 3 disappointed people. And then by Assassin's Creed next, people are just like, ah, whatever. Yeah. But <laughs> because Assassin's Creed 3 disappointed people and then... Assassin's Creed 4, a lot of people think it's the best in the franchise. It kind of gave it, like, 
is like you know grandpa shouldn't be alive right now but yeah. modern medicine is doing <laughs> shots him back to life <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's like he's some that's not really grandpa but he's still moving right yeah like uh that's like that's pretty bridges. much what, what i feel about it and now finally they're like okay like the adrenaline is is out of the bloodstream and <laughs> he finally was able to sign the dnr and the exactly, family yeah. finally pull the plug this is a really sad metaphor <laughs> Let's hope we fucking do it this next year. <laughs> We're sorry, Grandpa. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Mathis, there actually was an Assassin's Creed Pirates game, apparently. I thought you were going to say Assassin's Creed Grandpa. No, I wish. No, Assassin's <laughs> Creed Black Pirates. No, yeah, it was, a, it was a mobile game on iOS oh. and Android in 2013. Oh, shit. That's why. Yeah, by I Ubisoft Paris. Got to make room. Got to delete my Candy Crush. Seriously, dude, you got to get rid of Fallout Shelter and make some space for Assassin's Creed Pirates. That's, That's what true. you got to do. Shit. They're like, you guys want pirate game? Mobile, <laughs> straight up. I like pirates. that Batman conversation we just had for the last twenty minutes. <laughs> that was a good one. Realistically, they're already like seventy-five percent done with the next Assassin's Creed, right? Oh, certainly. It's probably yeah. like gone gold already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, even if they were like, we're not gonna make any more Assassin's Creed games, it would like, take till like more. 2020 until they got the remaining <laughs> ones out of the hose. Well, for the next game <laughs> in the main series. Syndicate was the ninth game, believe it or not, if you're looking at just the main series entries. So you've got Assassin's Creed 10 on the oh, way. Okay. Fuck, man. Which is a, that's Assassin's we'll Creed X. X. Yeah, it's going to be X. It's Almost ten certainly. Games in eight years. I haven't played too much of Syndicate, but at this point, like from what I've played from Syndicate, it's like they have just taken their story and just went throw their hands in the air and just went, fuck it. Oh, fuck like, it. Yeah, who knows anymore? Yeah. It's... <laughs> we don't care about our story anymore. <laughs> just go kill people in London. Have fun. Well, I mean, when you carry on a franchise for a certain length of time, there there comes a point where the story just sort of, sort of have to fucking go out the window. Yeah. Otherwise, there's nowhere you can go with it. Jumps the shark like Fonz. Yeah. Yeah. Can do a Final Fantasy and just make them individualized stories that take place in the time period. Who cares about the overarching modern day yeah. nonsense sci fi bullshit? They really wanted to pretend they were the writers of Lost and then they found <laughs> their way halfway through the Lost season three and then figured out they had no idea what they were fucking doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. So they, they succeeded in that they became the writers of Lost. Became the writers of Lost. Man, that is, that's weirdly accurate. That is, that is a really good comparison. Thanks, man. Uh. Fucking, I just, I was, I was just remind, reminded of on live, by the way, just yeah. by looking at the Assassin's Creed Wikipedia page. That was, that was a thing that existed. Oh yeah, you're right. I tried to come to bat for on live too, way back when that was just in its infancy, and uh, boy, that was a mistake. It's like a sweet thing if it works. Yeah, and properly. it didn't ever. <laughs> I tried it a lot, and it never worked. But yeah. I won't talk about on live because it's dead now. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, Batman's done with. Rocket League! I still love it! I like that game. You guys still playing Rocket League? I'm still playing no, it daily. <laughs> Last night, I was like, maybe I should ask Bear to play Rocket League. Mm -hmm. But instead, you drafted. I just uh, drafted in Magic. Yeah. And then, I like an hour later, I saw that you were playing Rocket League. And I was like, could have done that. Did you? Do you feel like you made the right choice? I went 2-1, and one, so I, I feel okay about it. Okay. But, um, you know, I, Rocket League I need is a better game to relax. <laughs> also, it's a lot cheaper. about that. Yeah, it depends on how you're playing it, I guess. Let's yeah. get ice hockey. We need to get the group back together. I, Man, want to play I know. So check this out. There is so much cool stuff coming to Rocket League. This is just straight up going to be a gush piece, I think. We're changing the format a little Can bit. Can we here, not though, call it the... that? I'm going to call it a that because the, like the way I'm piece. talking about it, yeah. It comes gush right piece. out of our gush piece. How do you know what I nicknamed my genitals? Get it right oh, out of the Oh, Jesus, dude. What did we call our... Oh, no, that was the match three game, right? Eat dicks. Yeah, yeah, that was the one. Nom, 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 dick, dick, dick. Mm -hmm. uh, change is coming to Rocket League. There are, uh, there are a bunch of new features coming. This is basically what people have been wanting from Rocket League ever since we sort of got tired of playing the same old 3v3 awesome. and 4v4 stuff. There's going to be all sorts of new shit. So there's going to be new uh, map things. It's not just like new arenas. It's going to be new right. types of maps. It's going to be like different sorts of goals. Asymmetrical stuff, I think, is in the works right now. And then there's going to be uh, mutators for your car as well. So they're going to allow you to make you know small adjustments. Probably won't make huge differences in the grand scheme of things. But uh, there will be game modes that allow for uh, your alteration of your vehicles and the uh, mode around you. But I think what everyone's the most excited about, now that Ryan's back and we can get properly excited about it because we have the Canadian here, is... Uh, ice hockey. Ice hockey's coming in. Yeah. We're going to have Rocket League hockey. Yes. Rocket League. I think that's going to be 
<clears throat> that's going to become my new favorite game on top of Rocket League. It's going to be like Rocket League hockey, Rocket League, and then three other things that I'm playing at the moment. I and like the said, idea of it um, having, like, traction problems. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, the, it, maybe it makes me too Canadian, but the first thing I was thinking about when I saw it is, like, well, a puck has, like, different physics than a ball. How are you going to be able to get, like, lift on that? But mm. I'm assuming that they're going to work it out. I and don't know if there will be. Well, I don't know. Okay, so there's a if, screenshot with the puck flying around in the air. So yeah, clearly if there's no be. lift, I'd be disappointed because yeah. it'd be like just Rocket League, like air hockey. But right, not that, that would be terrible. <laughs> when you make custom matches, you'll be able to tweak specific things about the physics and traction and stuff. Yeah, which yeah, sounds yeah. So fun. I think definitely and, the biggest news coming out of it is that. Players. Sorry, what? Oh, and custom playlists, of course. You can join mm. a, a bunch of people that are just playing the same groupings of weird, strange mutator games, which sounds great to me too. Yeah, no, just I, I think this is what it needed for sure. Is the you know, like it's it's well, becoming that and, like, proper tournament support. Yeah, and a bread antenna. Yeah, mm. like that. <laughs> I feel like that may be what it needs to sustain itself a little. What bit if more. you could uh, pay fifteen dollars? And then they would give you three cars, and you could yeah. draft. And oh, play. I knew it! I knew it. The minute you said fifteen dollars, it's like it comes to the draft reference. I didn't catch it, man. Ah, oh, you yeah. guys have got all this. There's this new depth to MTG joke meta that I I don't think I'm ever gonna pick up on anymore. Uh, but that is actually a good segue too into the fact that they, uh, Psyonix, the developer of Rocket League, have discussed the possibility of holding an arena event in 2016. And they're not just talking about it, like they're kind of serious about it. They they think it will probably happen. They're gonna hold an event in an arena. And initially when I thought about that, I thought about, they're gonna have real cars. Oh, they're gonna really on. do it. <laughs> like, True Rocket League. Yeah, it's they gonna happen. They already did it in Germany. We've yeah. been linked the video a hundred times. <laughs> it's the most boring thing in the world. It's really yeah, boring, yeah. It kind of it's is. like cars are backing up, bopping a ball and backing up. The dude hit the other guy, and then this dude came out of the crowd. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get violent. <laughs> <laughs> we want this to be peaceful. Yeah. That wow. really is like the uh, the ultimate expectation versus reality sort of thing. Rocket League in game versus Rocket League IRL is it's, I mean, it's incredibly disappointing. I, I'll be excited to see if uh, what what the arena thing is going to be like. A lot of it's going to depend on how big the prize pool is, mm. and I feel like their opportunity to jump on it while it was hot has kind of passed. Not that the game's doing bad by any stretch, but there was an opportunity for them to really be like, "All right, let's do this. Let's esports this shit up. Let's make it big." I mean, watching other companies. It, Blizzard comes to mind with Hearthstone. I mean, Hearthstone was not made to be an esports thing, but the minute a minor competitive aspect like esports scene cropped up around Hearthstone, Blizzard was like, let's do a tournament. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, they jumped on it. To be fair, though, Blizzard is the kind of company that has $6 billion to throw around. (laughs) I'm not saying they 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 don't need, they didn't need to make a huge tournament, but something more than like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Maybe like a few thousand. Just get like a $5,000 tournament. Top prize takes like 2,000. The rest gets separated for the lower. Mm. Anything to just like ignite a spark. But because they just kind of like, yeah, let's let the, the weekly 100 or 75 euro or pounds or whatever it was tournaments go. It's like that's not enough to foster it, um, at least the competitive scene. So the competitive scene right now has people that are not really practicing and no one's really like try harding on Rocket League right now. Mm. So I'd be curious to see how big this arena is going to end up being. Yeah. I kind of shared. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the problem that as Bear and I have talked about before is that, uh, like a lot of esports people, let's ignore the people who win the international and make like a million dollars each. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But a lot of them make more from streaming than they make in prizes. That's like for sure. However, very few of them is it more meaningful to stream than to play in the tournament, and that's mm. where the right. kind of the prize pool is for a lot of Rocket League stuff right now is the Rocket League uh, esports athletes, whatever you want to call them, competitors are like, why would I have like a 5% chance to win 75 euros when I could just make that in donations yeah. during the tournament right. instead? Right. right. Yeah. And, you know, Mathis, I kind of was, I, I shared that mindset uh, not too long ago, actually. And then I've, I've looked at it, you know, like, and there were a couple of posts about this as well in the Rocket League subreddit that were detailing, you know, how how esports have kind of progressed for a lot of the bigger games that are sort of the staples of the environment right now. You can talk about Hearthstone, for example. It 
Hearthstone didn't really, you know, like blossom as an esport immediately. As you mentioned, it took a little bit of time. It took some motivating and, you know, well, good I, people behind it to really there get it were, going. There were Blizzard was hosting Hearthstone tournaments during beta. Like True, it was happening yeah. immediately. But, you know, like as far as how it looks now, like with all sorts of different companies oh, getting on yeah. board and like huge events happening regularly, you know, like it's it's blossomed to its full status as a legitimate and probably perpetual esport for the next yeah. decade, you know? So Rocket League, it's got the appeal. It's got that universal appeal, but definitely there's there just sort of needs to exist in the community, I think, like uh, a better central hub for uh, legitimate competitive and well-structured tournaments and there's a couple of people that tr are trying to do that but you know it's just it's not the same kind of audience it, it's just it while it does have universal appeal it's going to be kind of difficult to make rocket league into something as uh, easy to tune into and check out as something like hearthstone Oh, and I'm not saying that it needs to be as big or whatever as Hearthstone, but another game that comes to mind is like World of War Tanks has oh, yeah. yearly mm -hmm. like esports. I mean, the I, I remember watching one. Um, is one it of World of Tanks? Tournaments. World think, of Tanks. Yeah, might World be. of Tanks. Yeah. Not World of War Tanks. Warcraft World of Warcraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> World of it Tanks. Or whatever. In there, yeah. They hold their like yearly twenty five thousand dollar like esports competition, and that hosts like a few thousand people on uh, on Twitch. And I feel like. Rocket League could easily do something like that. And they're, uh, you know, like, they had their big uh, spike in the beginning, too, as you mentioned. Yeah. But they couldn't really have capitalized on that as well as I think they want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think they want to take their time and just make sure that what they're going to do, they're going to do well. So yeah. I, I think I admire them for that approach. Well, let's hope the arena is going to be, the arena thing they want to do is going to mm. be exactly that. I'd be excited to see what their... Uh, prize pool and the details are going to be when they come out definitely uh yeah. yeah i don't think rocket league is like dead as an esport no i think we we wanted to see like a little bit more commitment especially financially earlier to kind of foster the scene but if they throw a big event uh and it, and it does well i think it could be uh it, it could help rejuvenate it a little bit i yeah. mean they're doing stuff like the modifiers you know that'll that'll get people back into the game as well so it could be good timing to try to capitalize on that if they're able to do an event before the end of the year mm. and they're more and then, than likely going to be prioritizing casual players above the tournaments yeah i mean that is where their money comes from right now mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. uh, it, it just it kind of amazes me though because i'm like you're gonna plan like an arena event before the end of 2015 you gotta like rent an arena yeah, uh, just to set up Oh, 2016. Yeah, oh, okay. sorry. Never no, I, I, I said 2016, I thought. But you yeah, might have said, I, I was getting coffee at mm. some point. So um, <laughs> I was like, wouldn't it just be easier to just throw like a grand? In no, the no, no, yeah, no, this is, this is probably okay. way in the future. We could yeah. all be dead by then. So mm -hmm, that's true. Whatever. Yeah, the heat death of the universe is inevitable. I don't know so. why they're planning for something that's almost 16 months in advance. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> foolish. Yeah, I only planned this roundtable live thing like a week ago. So hopefully this all works out okay. <laughs> Uh, Even that's a little overkill. Like, <laughs> kind of is, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that's new Rocket League content coming in. Oh, it's November, by the way. I should probably let you guys know. They have the, uh, the updated stuff is being slated for November, and then the arena stuff they're saying is hopefully happening sometime in 2016. Also, it, it is a rollout, right? November. Uh, yeah, no, it is that month, but I thought they were rolling out mutators across all of November and into December. That's what I remember hearing from the podcast or Should the uh, stream when they did. Oh, the, you did the stream? Okay, yes, yeah, that's probably true. They're, they're starting with the cube, and then the ice hockey's in December. I wish they'd start with the hockey. I wish they would, too. <laughs> the cube, cube I'm not nearly as excited about, but I'm sure it'll be kind of weird. The cube. Yeah, there's going to be weird bounces. and Yeah. I mean, the ball can just like literally stay still, right? That'll be wild. You would yep. think. I, it must be like kind of a beach ball design cube. Otherwise, it kicks I don't up think it's like a, than you'd expect. Yeah, I don't think it's like a portal companion cube where it's going to be, you know, like clunking around the floor. Yeah, clumsily. like a foam ball or something. Yeah, something like that. Epic Games has announced Paragon. Cool. That happened an hour ago. We're, we did it. We did we it. Did it. <laughs> <laughs> we're relevant. Oh, we're timely. Okay, that's all I wanted to yeah. say. There's basically nothing about it. You can go to epicgames.com and there's a Paragon button there and they'll uh, walk you through. It's a it's like a character class shooter, so I'm not honestly 
excited about it. I just wanted to say it <laughs> because because it's we can. Trailer. Oh like, man, this is man. gonna be the new. Uh, this Don't. is gonna be the new MOBA, right? <laughs> is first person shooters with RPG and MOBA elements? Yeah, I mean, you're that not, seems like where it's going. You're not. We wrong. thought the MOBAs were gonna die, but instead they just mutated into <laughs> first person shooters. <laughs> we got Overwatch, Battleborn, and now Paragon. Man. And what's uh, kind of funny is Cliffy B made his own company after leaving Epic Games and is developing um, yeah, that's right. Due Process, which for oh, Nexon, which is like another yeah. class based kind of. First person shooter. So this is certainly going to be the the flavor of the year. Then it seems, huh? Mm -hmm. We got the Twin Blast. Teases. You can, the site teases. You can discover a new hero each week mm -hmm. and what? unlock unlock unique in game items. Consider me teased. <laughs> what kind of unique in game <laughs> items do you have on offer here? You do have to sign up to uh, to be notified when you'll be able to uh, learn more about your character class, which I think is a pretty convoluted system for promotion, if you ask me. But you know, I'm not the one I'm in charge. Just gonna skip this whole genre of games. I'll catch you on the, <laughs> the next whole round. boat, huh? Yeah, just don't even bother. <laughs> That's a big list, man. You're avoiding yeah. a lot of stuff. No, but Fallout's coming out. I'll be fine. Yeah. Have after no, Fallout's it. actually a uh, a MOBA. Believe it or oh, not. Oh, really? Did you know? Oh, that's a MOBA now. I yeah. missed that yeah. part of the presentation. Damn. Yeah. Also, Afterbirth got canceled. So. Yeah. What? You gotta yeah, change your plans up a they little bit. They took it back. They did. They, they took it back. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It no. This is what you get for finding the loss with data mining, you fucking God losers. Damn it. <laughs> fucking data miners. God, Tyrone. <laughs> yeah, that's Paragon. Uh, if you're like Nick, just avoid it at all costs. Moving on. Kingdom. Kingdom is a 2D side-scrolling strategy and resource management hybrid. Very minimalist. Uh, came out on Steam on October 21st. Most of us have had a chance to play it, if not played it quite a bit. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil something first of all for folks that may be watching my Kingdom series. So keep that in mind oh, if, you, if you're one of those few people. Uh, I managed to beat it. I actually did manage to beat it, and it was hard as. Fuck. I, I was not prepared for like how difficult this was going to be. Maybe it's just my perspective, but I think the game is a very good example of easy to pick up, but ridiculously hard to master because it took me a while to do. So Kingdom in a nutshell. Uh, somebody else who's played it. Give me a, give me a rundown. It's like a minimalistic uh, economy management, uh, like Kingdom simulation mm -hmm. thing. 2D, kind of really pretty. And there's like, it's, it's a 2D plane on each side of your kingdom. There's like a hell portal that spews minions at night. Every few nights is a blood moon that spews really hard and multiple minions. And your goal is to destroy those gates. It spews building... really hard. It, it really it does. Spews, it spews. It gushes. It gushes. Minions all over the place. Minions. Mm -hmm. Banana minions. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> <clears throat> Duke so yeah, I mean, you just you, you build you build your kingdom up. You you train troops. You have uh, things that make you money, like farmers and hunters. And you're just your goal is to take out the gates before the gates fucking take you out. Mm -hmm. It's hard, and every night gets more and more difficult. I like the way that the game is brought in. It's extremely. Uh, it does not hold your hand basically at all. It gives you a couple of tool tips, but it otherwise just kind of throws you in. And then there's almost nothing describing what's going on. So you'll start off, you'll walk by the title text, and then you'll pick up coins, start to use those coins to fund certain things, and then pretty much from there on, you're just figuring it out. Just figuring it out yourself. Like, you have to figure out, if I fund this, what will that do? What will this upgrade net for me? What do these units actually do? What are these uh, tools for? Like, you can go out and wander around and find uh, different people, and Ooh. there's like a merchant, and there's deer there's around. Example. Sorry, go ahead. I haven't played it, but I did hear people talk about this, and apparently there's catapults that you can invest in early on and then mm -hmm. find out that they will shoot over everything. Yeah, it's Which true. is a problem when yeah, you need it... to defend your kingdom. Well, the thing <laughs> is, too, it's like, so, okay, so the actual pr process of defending your territory is not very straightforward either. So you'll be able to fund archers and a single catapult on each side, as far as I can tell. There's a couple other units, too, but I won't talk about everything. Uh... And then when you get an archer, so if you have one archer in like an outpost, he won't just be shooting down enemies as they come. He'll be firing his arrows, trying to hit something. 
Crying is the right word. Yeah, just like sort of coming in the general area of things and hoping that eventually one of them works out. <laughs> oh, there goes an arrow. Yeah, yeah we'll try again. I like that. And every I like once that in a while, they'll be like, dead shot. <laughs> All right. I'm like, oh, <laughs> these guys are awful. So the idea just sort of becomes, you know, like uh, build up as many of these incompetent archers as you can. And then eventually you'll just have a volley of arrows that's ideally just, you know, hitting everything because there's so many of them that it's almost impossible not to. And you don't figure that out, obviously, right away. You kind of, you like, you get a couple archers and then you think, oh, probably pretty safe. And then they're shooting over a wall and the enemies are like breaking down your defenses rapidly. And meanwhile, these archers are being like, Bleak! What? Uh, you want us to hit him? Oh, that's that's different. No, that's a different archer, not us. We're we're the bad ones. We're the ones that suck. The urgency's not there. No, it's not. So, stormtroopers. <laughs> they are stormtrooper yeah. archers. Uh, so it's it's minimalist, but I I found myself really liking it. Also, it's gorgeous. This is very good pixel art. Oh, it's extremely it's, yeah, good. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, the overall though I think uh, it's it's very easy to get into because I found myself like when I when I first picked it up and played it I was just playing and then uh, before I knew it forty five minutes had gone by and I was like oh this is actually like very engaging and all of a sudden like I I I gave it maybe a lot more credit than I should have at first because when I see something like that and I see that there's you know a lot of mystery and not very much straightforward description to it I think to myself immediately oh there's got to be like a ton of depth to this there's there's probably mm -hmm. like you know hundreds of hours worth of gameplay and all kinds of different items you can unlock and serious like huge upgrades and improvements I, I was thinking in pretty grand terms like a huge scheme of things but uh, it's not that it's it's a good size you know it's got a lot of content to it but it's not it's not huge which right. it shouldn't be because it's ten dollars. So that makes sense. But uh, overall, I was I was very pleased. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I had fun with it as well. Uh, it's one of those things that once you beat it once, I feel like you're done. You're not gonna go back and do it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not there's not that kind of replayability there. But getting to that first success, getting to the time where you beat it, is fucking hard, difficult, and there's a lot of learning involved. But if, when you do do it, it feels great, and you kind of put the game down and go, eh, it was worth my money. And I mm -hmm. think it is. I think. Uh, if you're into that, the strategy kind of economy management in a in a more minimalistic way, you're gonna you're gonna like Kingdom a lot. There's mm -hmm. no incremental element to it, right? It's not like 10 million or something where between rounds you unlock something that makes it easier next time. Right? No, it's just experiential. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably more <laughs> accurate. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, it it gets progressively more difficult, of course, just because that's how yeah. games work, pretty much. But it, it, yeah, it's it's not really like 10 million in that regard. Right. Mm. Uh, Ryan, did you play? Kingdom? I've I've played a little Kingdom, mm -hmm. but I have uh, recused myself from coverage. Ah, because that my publicist sense. also does PR for the game. Okay, so fair. fair enough. But I played it at PAX Prime for like thirty minutes, and I was feeling it. I was like, I was talking to the developer, and I was like, you know what? This is like a minimalist kind of like RTS mapped to a not isometric. Viewpoint. It's kind of mm. like uh, like rimmed caps or something like that. He's like, yeah, man. Yeah. It's like a big inspiration. I was like, I get you. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, actually. Rimmed caps was a pretty good com comparison. I like that. It's good. All right, Kingdom. nine ninety nine on Steam. It's available right now if you're interested. Go check it out. Another game that is very cheap. It's only three bucks on Steam right now. It came out on October 15th. It's called Downwell. Uh, it's... Apparently drawn a lot of inspiration from Spelunky. In fact, the game itself used to be a lot different. In its earlier form, it looked completely different from this. It didn't even have gun boots. It was sort of just like a, a vertical Spelunky, almost. Mm -hmm. So initially, you were just kind of like exploring down a well and dropping further and further and further and having level progression just like Spelunky did. But now, it's become something completely different, and in my opinion, for the better, like far and away. Uh, so Downwell is a game about using your gun boots to descend through a well. Uh, there's many different sorts of enemies as well as upgrades, pickups, items, things you can get. And uh, it's got a level progression system just as I mentioned. But overall, you know, that's basically it. Use your gun boots, descend through the well. Uh, very addictive. Yeah, combos. Yeah, combos That's the big well. thing. The game feel is outstanding in Downwell. And the general yeah. goal is you need to figure out a way to leverage your gun boots to use them to both destroy things and also hover to try and get you from one enemy to the next without breaking your combo down. Right. 
And that's really where I think the most addictive element of the game lies, because it feels fantastic to move around in it. It's very fast-paced, so you have to be able to handle that, but you'll gradually kind of pick up uh, what the pacing is after a few games, and by then you'll just be sort of into a flow state of just playing over and over and over. Mm -hmm. It's good. I like it a lot. I had fun with it. It's pretty, like you said, it's pretty basic. Yeah. Um, you kind of de described it perfectly, and it's fun. I think Nick's right. It has really good game feel. Everything about it just feels really good. There's a lot of the impact of the gum boots, like, is just right. I don't know. I like it a lot. Mm. I can't really say much outside of that, though. I will say the uh, I I'm not a huge fan of the display of it. I think the the color tone, like, even though you can change the palette, like the color palette, you actually have the option of changing that up a little bit to maybe mm. choose some softer colors, but the default color choice is kind of I don't know, just a little harsh on the eyes. I guess is how I, like how I would say it. You do? Yeah, I, I think it's I agree intentionally harsh. Mm. Uh, it's it's sort of taking the mirror's edge approach. They want to make you able to very quickly identify something important by their use of red. And the fact that they've included palette swap options is great, and I think it's a nice way to break up the uh, the moment-to-moment -moment between rounds. Yeah. But I think, honestly, the strongest is the original color palette. All the other ones sort of mess with it once you understand uh, in your head how this is all going to work, and then you can kind of change with it. Yeah, and that might be what I had a bit of a difficulty with, too. I sort of found myself not really being able to discern myself from the background a lot of the time. Did you guys have that issue? Not really. No. No? Hmm. Must just be... I must suck, I guess. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what that boils down to. Okay, how far have you guys gotten out of curiosity? Down to uh, Catacombs, so what, like second level or whatever mm -hmm. it is? Four Been one. the aquifer a couple times. Nice. Oh, I made it the furthest. Long. Yeah, you I definitely made it the furthest, man. Nobody's gotten to the boss, unfortunately. There's a boss, by the way. Spoilers, but there is a boss in there, too. And there's hard mode and, like, unlocks and <clears> stuff that happen. There's too. a good amount of stuff to unlock in the game, yeah. surprisingly. Like, for a $3 game, you wouldn't think it'd have that many unlocks, but yeah. sure enough, it's got a lot not of variety only, to it. Not only color palettes, and there's, like, a ton of those, but also actual changes to the style of how the game plays. Yeah. Um, there's one, for example, that makes you floatier, so you can combo easier. But at another expense, there's one that makes you heavier, but gives you more health and takes away your uh, sort of nuclear throne esque upgrade that you get between levels. Uh, well, it takes one of the three away, and you still get two. So there's a lot of like meta manipulation of how you're going to progress and how you're going to lay out your run that doesn't seem immediately apparent. But once you spend some time with it, you'll start to get used to what the options are and how you can take yourself to maximize your options for later. Yeah, definitely. Instead of calling it inverted doodle jump, I've come to think of Downwell as like ridiculous fishing but instead of trying to miss everything you try to hit everything yeah that works yeah yeah that works yeah i like it it's a good Use explanation a controller instead of tilt your phone around <laughs> yeah i like inverse doodle jump a little bit too but there's a lot less murder involved in that comparison yeah. you guys ever play like, that doodle jump yeah. arcade game you like go to an arcade and you're like play it pay a dollar to play doodle no. jump oh i have God. seen no. it I will never do that. <laughs> they, I, when we were at uh, Canada's Wonderland this summer, they also had like a Flappy Bird arcade machine. Now, <laughs> oh my god, you, you pay a dollar to play Flappy Bird, and you're like, this is like a dollar. These are the these are buy. the arcade cabinet industries desperately trying to stay yeah. modern, man. Like hooking onto the mobile scene. Oh. And... did they have Silent Hill Pachinko? I've heard it's fantastic. Silent Hill Pachinko. <laughs> Pull the lever in the in the <laughs> Toronto amusement park. <laughs> wow, they're lost. Honestly, that's gonna be huge, man. Mm. Oh, I know. Downwell is three dollars on Steam. It's Just worth buy a buy. It. I think it's worth a buy. Absolutely, yeah. Why not? Yeah, I wholeheartedly recommend it. It's less than one uh, Magic: The Gathering booster pack. That's true. And if you don't Unless like it, you can just go buy a Magic pack. Lives. That's true. How much are your Magic cards? I think we talked about this, didn't we? It was like eight dollars a pack or something. Uh, well, Madness. in Canada, they're like five now. Yeah. But Mathis uh, lived near a uh, place that sold them for two dollars. Yeah, Ooh, it was a nice. promotion. I bought eighty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Wait, you bought eighty packs? My dad bought eighty packs. Okay, <laughs> that, but... is not, that does not help you recoup any. Amount. I didn't ask for it. He's like, I'll buy. It. Let's get <laughs> oh you some packs. Oh my god, eighty! Like, right. I didn't know it was uh, that many. Holy crap, dude! We bought the store out. Oh my god! Oh, you like literally, you did that. Dude, that was like a month ago. <laughs> I know, but I remember we talked about it. I didn't realize you bought the store out of packs. Yeah. That's crazy. Some 12-year-old kid was like, finally, I could use my allowance to buy four packs instead of my usual two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sorry. Well, like, we went in there. I was going to buy like um, just a couple of packs or whatever because they were two bucks. And then my dad's like, why don't we just buy like, like a ton? He's, and the, the guy's like, well, you can only buy 20 per customer. He's like, hey. my dad is like, I'll buy 20. 
and then you'll buy 20. And then your and sister then, will buy 20. Oh, and I was like, oh, oh. come on. <laughs> and then, you brought the whole family to fucking <laughs> And then they sell all went out. in one bag, and then I took them home. It's this nice corner store, and you're getting rid of all of his other customers. It was not a corner store. It was Newberry Comics. You are Walmarting Newberry Comics. You are forcing them yeah. to be your sole supplier. You, you were ridiculous. Math is Walmarting everybody. And he waited for the promotion to end, and then he just started selling them on the street for four bucks. <laughs> just in front of their shop, too, like yeah. right by the door. Yeah. And you had a banner on your head that said, Math is Games on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. Buy my shirt. <laughs> and my magic cards. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. All right. Let's talk about Afterbirth, shall we? Not the, not the gross stuff. The, uh, you know, like the game. It's the Bonding of Isaac stuff. Afterbirth. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little it's bit. A game. I'm playing a little bit. That's yeah, okay. It's 11 bucks right now it's on about Steam. A baby, right? There's like a baby involved. So there's this whole backstory, but you know, I think it's. I think we did the same bullshit with Rebirth. We're yeah, like, why do we always do that? We have to downplay it, don't we? Because everyone's too hype already. We have to kill the hype a little bit. It's it's ten it's it's ten it's one oh nine it's ten. It is yeah. I, I was gonna say all of the hype right now is surrounding one oh nine. That's. We're, we're, we're having to, you know, mitigate that a bit just because that's literally happening right now, too, which is another fun thing yeah. about the live format is that people are trying to solve this ARG on Reddit right now. Apparently, there's this big deal about uh, 109. So if you don't know anything about it, here's the, here's the snippets that are the Can most really noteworthy. Introduce the pack first? No, <laughs> no, we want to talk about this. Everybody <laughs> okay. already knows about it. It expands, yeah, quick rundown. If you have Rebirth, it expands Rebirth. That's like over 100 new items to the game, a new character, new levels, new bosses. We'll Unlocked talk about it. it more. We will, I promise. But we want to talk <laughs> about this right now because it's kind of crazy. So, um, with the 109 stuff, there was a, a kind of a negative backlash from Edmund. Not like a backlash, but he was upset about it. He, he didn't like that people uh, found out all the secrets about Rebirth so fast. I think it was, it was it something like 109 hours after Rebirth had been released. That's a released. theory, I don't know if that's true. Okay, but supposedly 109 hours after Rebirth had been released, every single bit of content had been discovered. So like, even the Lost, all the stuff that they thought it would take us a long, long time to figure out, uh, it was all done. Like, the entire game had been data mined to completion. Uh, and now they're going along with this 109 thing in several different ways. For example, uh, Tyrone did a stream recently, uh, which crashed after exactly 109 minutes at 1009. Yeah. At, what a guy. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's pretty lucky if those things lined up by coincidence. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other 109 things. And uh, the fact that also you can donate up to 109 <clears> in the <throat> greed machine for the ultra greed fight. And then that is where it stops, I guess. So Well, it's it's where it stops depending on who you are and how much you want to dig into it, which is why the ARG is fun. Yeah. Because now we're so. digging into Bible verses and Northern Lions 109th Let's Play episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. Maybe, look, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is not new content that can be unlocked, but how funny would it be if they just, like, Half baked this ARG to fuck with people who yeah. got the lost secret. I would not yeah. be surprised by that. No, I and would, then actually, I would... like in in two days, Edmund's just like, nah, we're just gonna make the greed machine increment by 109 cents per week so that you guys don't just yeah. tap out. Oh yeah, that might I mean, happen. It's awesome. <laughs> it's very I was on board with you when we were laughing at ourselves, but now I'm sad that it might so actually like... just be something that simple. Another problem with the rebirth and why the secrets are found so fast is that there were achievements attached to yeah. the law. So people knew the, the secret character existed. They just wanted to know how to unlock him and get it. From our understanding, there are no achievements attached to this other new secret character that is supposedly exists. There's also 40 items that are not being listed on the wiki and people don't know about. Um, and the, Which is huge, by the way. 40 items yeah. that no yeah. one has ever seen or has any idea exist. Right. Could all and, be babies. Yeah. <laughs> We all That's know like, true, yeah. the, way, <laughs> the way that originally the intended way of discovering the lost was was to hold on to the missing poster and die as a character and a puzzle piece will be filled in. Yeah. And over time you discover uh, the lost. Well, now people have discovered is you, if you have the missing poster as Lilith and die as Lilith, a new puzzle piece shows up that starts getting filled in. Ooh. So, yeah, exactly. And so people are starting to put together these new puzzle pieces that are just being discovered while holding the missing poster, which will hopefully discover this brand new character that people 
don't know about because there are no as far as we know there are no achievements attached to it so right. people can't just be like what is it what is it what is it and people said they have gone through the code and the code is deliberately written in a way where it discovering these secrets are fucking like borderline impossible that's awesome i'm glad they did that yeah so we'll see We'll see what it is. I'm excited. I mean, I've been trying things like I was like, oh, the greed machine. Why would you donate to the greed machine? We already have a donation machine that says donate. So maybe we should bomb the greed machine and try and get the money out of it or something. And I was like, mm. I'll do it as Judas because Judas was greedy and he sold out Jesus for money. And I just did all that stuff. And I was like, nothing happened. Yeah, oh, man, you're in deep. I was in deep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. I didn't realize you are like subject zero for these ARGs, aren't you, man? <laughs> so I tried that last night. I myself as well. Nothing yeah. happened. Yeah. But I like it because it's 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 fun. It's yeah. fun trying to figure it out. No, I'm I, I'm really happy to see that this is happening. This is the kind of stuff I I, I loved. Uh, well, for a while, I loved this stuff surrounding, you know, like the Half-Life universe. There was always those fun ARGs mm -hmm. happening. And then Halo actually had a couple of these, too. Halo had the I love bees com yeah. fiasco. That I was crazy. Bees. Yeah, you remember that? Those are good times. Those was like 2005. <laughs> Welcome to the swarm! <laughs> There's a joke eight people will understand. That's uh, okay. So, um, yeah, anyway, let's talk about Afterbirth properly, though. But... Yeah. You know, aside from the whole ARG stuff that will hopefully be figured out for us so we get to see it all because that'd be cool. I want to figure it out for me. I want to figure it you out. You want to figure it out? I kind of just want people do. to just, you know, there's, like, I'll... I am error secret rooms. Those mm -hmm. are new. And there's this yes. thing called emergency contact and you use it and mom's hand comes down and help you. And I think somehow you can get picked up by it and it'll take you to the blue womb. Oh, man. I but bet it's that's not true. a problem. Or to, to the blue. pyramid level. Yeah, <laughs> that has to exist well, now, right? No, so the blue womb is where you fight the new boss, but you can't do anything on it except for fight the boss and pick up items. Mm -hmm. So the belief that I think is kind of going around is that there is a whole floor that happens there. Not yeah, just the boss so fight. There's some weird stuff that's happened to some people that where somebody ended up like had nine lives, ended up dying on on the boss fight, and then they walked back into the room. These black veins went all over the screen. The boss immediately died, and where the face of the boss ends up being, there's like a, like a weird wound on it. Picture and they tried viral. bombing it, but they couldn't do it. But they didn't have a shovel, so they couldn't dig there. And they just had to keep. They had to move on. So it they're weird. There's something weird with that new boss. I just don't know. No oh. one knows what it is. Okay, so do we have to stuff with the monstro fight in the green? Yeah, the monstro fight before Alter Green too. Like, it's what's that about? Or something. There's like a weird blo uh, block that can show up. I heard. Okay, so hold on. Do we have to like? <laughs> this is weird. I think man. we might need to I rewind a little bit because we are already getting into like deep ARG territory yeah. with all this stuff. Let's talk about the new stuff in in Afterbirth. Let's talk about our favorite new parts of Afterbirth right now. Ryan, I want you to start. All right. Um, item combos actually work. Yes. That That's pretty sweet. Kate and I had a run where we got the Bomberman item, which makes your bombs explode in like a big X pattern. And then Sad Bombs and Mom's Knife. So when we put down a bomb, it exploded into like a thousand knives. And I was like, this is the greatest thing of all time. <laughs> yeah. Sh uh, Synergy is actually working is a positive. Yes. Brimstone, rubber, cement. Does that also work? True. Oh my God. Yeah. That's the yes. best. Bounces. Brimstone Holy Light does not work. That makes me sad. Yeah, not Brimstone, every synergy still works, unfortunately. Brimstone Mom's Knife, I knew was <clears throat> kind of a thing, but now it seems to be like better. Is like more effective now. Have you guys gotten Brimstone Mom's Knife? I yet? haven't gotten Brimstone at all. At all? Wow. At all? That's crazy. That's, when it comes, it'll I'll get it like ten times in a row, but it yeah. hasn't happened. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. Mom's Knife Tiny Planet isn't better. Oh, that's. A I did use that though. This is and still it's still just like one rotating knife. Yeah, right I there. had it with Loki's horns and so like once every 10 times I shot it it was like four knives going mm -hmm. in a circle and that was awesome. Looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, a little yeah. blender action. No, I think um, I, I agree with that. I not only is it good that they actually work and, you know, do what they're supposed to, but it is a lot more visually satisfying too yeah. that you get to yeah. see these things happening. Mathis. Uh, yeah. What do you like? What do you like? What do you got? I really like greed mode. Yeah. I, I I think that's my favorite aspect. I like the weapon item combos are great, and the new items so far are really cool. But I find myself really <clears throat> wanting to play greed mode a lot. I just it's a little faster, which is fun. Uh, there's a lot more strategy involved because you can pick and choose the items that you want, and you can reroll when you don't like any of the items. So that gives you a little bit more uh, autonomy over the items that you pick up. Uh, and I really like the ultra. My favorite two things so far are the two new boss fights because they're a lot more involved. They're a lot more intricate and. Um, one of my favorite things about Rebirth was the lamb fight. The lamb fight, I think, was one of my favorite fights in the game. It's just a shame that the dark chest is trash. 
So you never really go fight the lamb. You go to the mm. chest because the chest is just more fun. Uh, but the new fights are really cool. There's a lot more thought involved. The Ultra Greed fight with uh, the coins that can come out that can give them health or blow up or unlock doors. Uh, there's a lot more reaction and a lot more thinking involved. So Spoiler I, warning, by the way. Sorry if you guys haven't seen any of this content yet. I think, well, you know, probably went without saying. But yeah, yeah. half an hour's worth to get <laughs> yeah. to that fight. Yeah, yeah exactly. probably most people see it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think the new the two new boss fights so far are great. Well, all the new boss fights are great. Uh, Little Horn is uh, some interesting Little Horn mechanics. I love. I think Little yeah. Horn is probably my favorite new boss. boss. Yeah. yeah, like, the new bosses have interesting mechanics, which I enjoy. And even the new bosses that have new forms that have new mechanics like Mega Maw that can do like weird wave bullet shit that yeah. caught me off guard or Krampus who can spin his brimstone around that caught me off guard a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just like there, there seems to be a little bit more thought involved with some of the boss fights and the new greed mode is great. Yeah. Agreed. I think greed mode is kind of just like a cut the fat version of Isaac that I didn't know I wanted. It yeah, really it just sort of try out items quickly without a lot of the meta. Yeah, it, it, it sort of just boils Isaac down to <laughs> what we really want out of it, you know, without the actual playing rebirth, I guess, part of things. <laughs> My only complaint about it is that, and you know, it, it might just be kind of clumped randomness, but hmm. like I get the D100 every time and or, or the D4 or missing though. And I'm always like, well, I could like not take it and maybe lose or I could take it and just win. Like every time I've taken it, I've just stomped the game. So yeah. I don't know if it's if it just spawns too much or it's just um, maybe I've been getting it a lot. But I'm kind of like, it doesn't matter what items I pick up because the D4 is going to show up eventually. And then it's like six chop and uh, yeah, there it is. So, Do you really yeah. have that consistent of success with the D100? Every, every single time I've used it on greed mode, I've won easily. Wow. It's actually happened to me as well twice. Man, I just I guess I should pick it up more. <clears throat> I've been For the most part you're like you're aggregating transformations at the very least. Oh, so it's yeah, like okay. when you roll, you might get a transformation and if you do, it sticks around. So really like after right, like six true. rolls, you're going to have like every transformation in the game. Yeah, then I all you need is to have that. not shitty damage. Because transformations yeah. didn't stack in Vanilla Rebirth, right? They yeah, were there were only two of them. Oh, there were two of them, too, and they yeah. stacked. They did stack. They did stack, but it didn't really make a difference because Guppy was really the only one that made a difference. Right? Yeah, and Lord of the Flies was garbage. <laughs> yeah. the fly and neutral flies became oh, your friends. Yeah. Guys, what if my first greed mode run was actually how you're supposed to do the secret? You get super magnets, so the doors all conglomerate in the middle, and then you get you wait for the keys to open them, and then you go inside the door. Oh. Oh, I saw your run. You broke the doors. There's like, that dudes was weird. coming out. You can't get in there. <laughs> Give it a try. I mean, that's man. the thing. You, you know, could, I, I bet you things. can get in those doors, man. Give it a, I, bet. I, I would be surprised if you couldn't. Yeah. But people, they, what, another fun thing is like trying to figure out what some of the trinkets do too. Yeah. Like some of the trinkets, are, like one of the one of the cool theories. I don't know if it's been figured out, but um, you know, watch battery is a trinket, and it's like, what the hell does that do? Yeah. Uh, people are like, well, what if you have broken stopwatch with? Oh. Watch will that fix yeah. broken stopwatch and will that do something? I don't know, That's a very it. weirdly specific trinket though, isn't it? It's right? like Stop if you have this item that battery. normally sucks, now it's better. Yeah, that's just interesting. Um, some of the trinkets are, are terrible, but that's mm. just par for the course. Just soy fun. milk still sucks, by the way. That's not surprising. People were Largely trying to true. tell me soy milk is not <clears throat> that garbage anymore. So soy milk is still very much garbage to you. I don't know, man. On that first daily, I, I liked it as Lilith. It it got better as a as an item. I think it, it it's now more fun to play, but it's still you know like I think multiplying soy milk makes it better. I know that exactly. Much. Mm -hmm. I I still will take soy milk almost every time. Unless really, you have man. soy milk Dunscap, Ryan. Yes, I have had soy milk uh, <laughs> wizard or the the tumor transformation, and it's mm. fucking horrible. When you, <laughs> it's the worst. Grab soy milk wizard and then just become like the worst bullet hell boss of all time because that's the bullet hell boss that you know, like it it starts to send out those impassable bullet walls that mm. normally when they're surrounding you they would come to a close and eventually right. start to hit you, but those just stay there. So you, you <laughs> just you just keep the enemy centered and you're just like, oh, you better not move anywhere. You're gonna get hit. <laughs> Be careful. One, uh, one thing I don't like is that, like, multi-dimensional baby makes my head hurt when yeah. I when I have it, and then I get like a huge rate of fire or big tears, and the whole screen is just like you know flashing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, like, mm -hmm. it's one of the first times I've ever, ever actually been legitimately like, if you have photosensitivity, don't watch this because this is gonna get nuts. Yeah, and it shows up all the time. 
Well, you it know, does. like Sad Bombs and Death's Touch was always a thing. It would spin across the Yeah, whole... mm. but this is like, I, I feel like it's worse, admittedly. It's got very distinct, you know, like seizure inducing flashing yeah. patterns, which it is, is kind actually of a bad like thing. white and then black. Yeah. Rapidly the oscillating yeah. between them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is true. Oh, we got some new news here, guys. Oh, what's that? Wargaming, you may know them as um, World of War Tanks. Yeah. Creators. World of War Tanks. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Meme that. They have uh, they've invested $4 million into Hitbox. Hitbox? Everybody go to I'm moving box. over. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Hitbox. That's a surprising mm -hmm. revelation. Are there big, there's got to be like one or two big streamers on Hitbox, right? You know, like the Hitbox celebrities. Well, they're going to go to Hitbox Con. I think Hitbox just sort of exists as a, as a joke. Oh, <laughs> not, 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 not like, okay, so that's obviously, you know, summarizing it. Is there a an little expo bit for the Transformers and would they call it Decepticon? That's pretty good. That'd be great. That's pretty good. We got kind of derailed here. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about things I like. Like Afterbirth. Like Afterbirth? Yeah, like Afterbirth things. Yeah. yeah. Like so I have noticed a few details that yes. I think, okay. uh, that you guys like as well but didn't think about right now. Like, mm -hmm. Let me get my conspiracy <laughs> note. I'm ready. No, 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 not about that. Oh, okay, man. So when you're in the game, you can hit pause now, and it shows you the notepad so mm -hmm. you don't have to back out of your run and go look to see what you haven't completed with that character yet. That's a huge, oh, that like, is, that is useful... Huge. Mm -hmm positive improvement that yeah. I have to give thumbs up for. Um, there's a few things like that. There's also slightly snappier animations, I feel like. Everything feels yeah, a, little, definitely. Like, a little, bit, little bit pulled in, if that makes sense. Mm. I think the bombs even explode slightly. It's, it's tough to explain, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Like yeah. The animations definitely feel a lot better. Snap harder. Yeah. Yeah. Like when things pop out of the chest. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. I love the new music. I think it's a huge benefit to have more floor variations with more music tracks just because mm -hmm. you hear the same one so many times. Yep. Getting to like the catacombs and hearing that same like Hotline Miami sounding vibe is yeah. just <laughs> drains me now. It makes the basement a lot less boring, which I, di I didn't even know I wanted. So yeah. that's yeah. awesome. But the burning well, basement I... is yeah. fucking annoying. Well, that is... would be a negative. <laughs> the cellar was annoying though. Like I hate. Yeah. No, I but like the... the cellar is annoying because it's hard. But the burning basement, I'm just like, I actually can't see. Oh, no, the, the darkness burning stuff. basement is fucking stupid. Yeah, like, it's just like, it's just covered in smoke, and you're like, every yeah. enemy is invisible. Yeah. No, I agree with you there. It's a little much. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. That's okay. Uh, another thing that I know you guys want to talk about, but you haven't yet, is the fact that there's daily runs now. I'm sure people yeah. care about mm -hmm. quite a bit. And Absolutely. the scoring system is actually pretty well balanced. Yeah. I think we were all surprised to see, like, they really, really thought that out well, and I don't think it requires that much tweaking. I right. have no? some issues with the daily scoring. Okay. okay. But it's based on my preference for how to play the game. And Mathis saw this yesterday. when He beat the daily in, like, 14 minutes. I beat it in, like, 28 minutes, and he lost to me by, like, 4,000 points or something like that. That mm. blasted through it. Yeah. So he, you actually, it doesn't incentivize time as much as I hoped that it would. Yeah. Um, you know, every second that you take is one second off of your run, but every penny that you pick up is like 10 points that you gain. So there's a point where I was like, well, I could do the run really quickly because mm -hmm. I'm a Zazel with really high damage, but instead I'm going to use an Algiz rune on the blood bank. And it took like another, you know, 45 seconds, but I got like 80 cents out of it. Literally, that is like 12 minutes of playtime right. justified there. Yeah. I also think it's really weird that... Um, I know, I know that their time is a separate criteria, but it defaults to score, so it's like... Yeah, no, exactly. Score is the, the real deal here. I also feel like um, I don't know why items cost you points. Like, yeah, that is... I've been thinking about that, too. It is really yeah. interesting. Like, I, I think it's... You know, there's there's probably an argument to be made about, you know, like, you should be... You should get more value out of kind of going on a pure run, you know? It's like, if you're able to beat it without the aid of all these new items that you're getting then maybe that's it's more a impressive. speed runner bonus right. you didn't bother going to an item room there is no speed runner bonus though because what the score rewards right now is basically just if you can get like iv bag bloody penny then yeah. you could literally just oh. get infinite points like yeah. as long as you're as long as you have the patience for it yeah Yesterday, the, I think it was the run that really kind of solidified for me, like, all right, I need to slow down because I, bla I blasted through the game super fast. I took very, very little damage, 
I even I even prioritized because we they ended on mom's heart, so I prioritized picking up the Bible when it showed up, so I could instant kill mom and the heart yeah. and just be done with the run. And I was like, that's gonna be great. I'm not gonna take any damage from them. I'm just gonna instantly kill them. and I'm gonna beat the run in like like Ryan said, like 14 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I crushed everybody in far as far as time is concerned, but. I was still surprised when I saw the scoreboard. I'm like, oh, I still did not. I still placed like 4,000th or whatever in the score or whatever it was. But um, I wish that, yeah, I, I think I'm with Ryan. I wish that they prioritized time just a little bit more so than they do because it feels like, fuck time, man. Just pick up money. Yeah. Just pick up all the money. That's if I knew about right. the money thing, I should have just book a shadow. Like when Book a Shadow showed up, I should have book a shadowed the... Uh, the blood bank, and then I should have Al, uh, Algiz ruined the other blood bank that showed up on the floor after, because it's just so many points yeah. just my, for picking uh, up money. My optimization for it right now, what I'm thinking going into the next daily is only pick up items that are meaningful. So even if you get, like, concussive tears, I'm not going to pick it up, because I'm like, oh, point three damage? That's not worth, like, the score penalty. Yeah. Brimstone? Yeah, sure. Mom's knife, the ability to fly, guppy items, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um only go exactly as fast as you need to go to get to boss rush. The rest of your time should be spent uh, farming up consumables because that's how you get the, the maximum amount of points. But then you got to do boss rush to get that extra like four or five K. Yeah. Even exploring rooms to a certain degree is worth it for the most part. If it takes, if you have enough damage that it takes you like five seconds to beat a room, you mm -hmm. only need one penny to give you a positive score for going to that room. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, Again, like, I, I, I really dislike the fact that you're rewarded, like, using the Algas rune on the blood bank, you're rewarded because you get all the pennies for it. But then if you play it enough to get the item and you pick it up, it erases the bonus that yeah. you got there. It's like, well, we're going to, we want you to really do your due diligence, but not that far. Like, right. <laughs> I, I yeah. kind of feel like if, you, if you're able to scum an item out of it, that should be, like, the ultimate reward. Does, does the dollar give you points, I wonder? Uh, I don't know, but I will say that people said Skeleton Key and Pyro do, so okay. that it's might weird. incentivize that. Because yeah. you get you get penalized for picking up items, and you know you you want money so you can buy an item out of the shop, but it's almost like pennies are purely there for points at this point. There is no other purpose for pennies outside of inflating your score. Yeah, they're just points on the ground. That's all they are. And I don't know Looking if I like, like a that. fool with your points on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like that though. I feel like if like, I could have gotten, like, another, like, 6,000 points out of yesterday's daily. So what it would have been is just, like, don't pick up shit like Abel or, like, even, I don't know, probably I'd take, like, Cube of Meat. But don't pick up, like, uh, Pageant Boy yeah. or stuff like mm -hmm. that. Because it's just, like, Pageant Boy is, like, it gives you score, but then it takes away more. Yeah. Um, then actually do Boss Rush. Prioritize being able to get that 4,000 points. And that's it, basically. And then, you know, if, if you don't take five shitty items and you do boss rush, that's another 6,000 points. Yeah. That's, wow. I didn't uh, realize how out of touch I was when I said that. I thought you guys were pretty happy with it. We're just getting... oh, I, I really like yeah. the dailies, and I, I do think that for the most part, it's, it, show, it reflects the competition well. But it also ends up right now being like, if you play it the same way you play a regular Afterbirth run, everybody that gets to the same floor is going to be within, like, 2,000 points, so within like 10% of the score of one another. Um, so I think the, the optimization for that, I think, is just like a little weird. I think it's easy to argue, too, that this very well may be the sort of thing that you don't think about until there's thousands of people all playing the daily every day. So, you know, it's like it's good to be able to balance stuff out after the fact, too. But I am impressed overall with the general formula that they use for it. Like, I, I really was wondering how it was going to work when they were talking about having a daily challenge, but I'm really impressed yeah. with it overall. Yeah, I agree. I have uh, other details if you want to keep moving on. Yeah, definitely. So there's now an item tracker built into it, which is great. Mm -hmm. It may, yeah. it might not be ideal. I mean, it's a little big in my per, uh, preference, but maybe there's a way I could tweak that or something. But anyway, it's really nice that they actually cared enough to put that in because uh, they didn't have to bother with that. And it's cool to be able to see that for the sake of streamers and such. And yeah, I'm sure they saw a lot items. of streamers were using like you know item tracking mods, yeah. so they figured they might as well build it in. And honestly, I still like the old one I had better than the one they put in, but there is potential that maybe theirs will change or whatever. So mm -hmm. I just think it's a nice gesture. Uh, really, really good idea, too, and one that I'm, I wish they had even in Rebirth, but the fact that now when you start a challenge run, it shows you where your destination is, uh, you know, yeah. whether you're going to the heart, whether you're yeah. going to the mom's foot. or Same thing with the whatever. daily challenge there, too. It right. tells you that that it's way. It's borderline absolutely necessary to know that kind of thing mm -hmm. in these cases, so to plan your strategy around what your path is going to be. So, yeah. 
good on you for putting that in. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other major ones. Just the the fact that there's new challenges in general is refreshing. There's a couple that I kind of hate, but I think you're going to get into that every time. It feels really hard. Like, they really want to troll people so hard yeah. that they're doing it, like, at the expense of playability sometimes. Like, the Guardian one in particular, it puts uh, puts you in a position where you have Isaac's heart in control by a human popcorn, and he's walking around. He has his own agenda. <laughs> and so, you... Yeah. All you have is a sword, so you can smack stuff around and try oh and body block shots. And you got to make it, I think, to the end of the cathedral or the womb, one or the other. Wow. So that's the, a long, frustrating run. Yeah. Well, the, the problem gim- with the gimmick of that is pretty awesome, though. I well, like the, yeah, I like the gimmick of that. The problem with that particular challenge run is that there is damage. Like, there should always be an element within a challenge run that is under your control in some way. And in that challenge run, the mom fighting, for example, you can't stop mom's foot from stomping on. Right punching bag holding your heart yeah. there's no way you that can control sense. that or stop that so that kind of fu- that can just fuck you if you if you yeah. end up in that fight you don't kill mom fast enough you will just lose and that that element of just kind of taking it out of your hands is not fun yeah i agree and yeah. i had similar issues with blue bomber uh which essentially has you with the the blue detonator which makes you explode but you're you also have pyro so you can't hurt yourself and there are enemies that you just can't kill with detonations. So, well, what I had to do was I poked up my other controller and I had a co-op baby come and kill those enemies so I could leave the room. There is the fail safe, of course, if you wait for three minutes, the doors will open. But I just didn't feel like that was quite the right way to go about that. Yeah. Maybe there should be another easy but, like, not heavy way to do damage for that character. That's just my idea. So, yeah, there's a couple little tweaks, but overall, I think I enjoyed a lot of the other challenges. The one about Pride Day was really fun, where you have constantly changing tiers. Uh, You've got Rainbow Worm and $3 Bill and whatever the other thing is, and it's just constantly changing the whole run. Um, There's just innovations like that. I really just want more weird runs that are fun to play that you can repeat and try again if you, you know, didn't make it for whatever reason. I like them on the whole. Agreed. Yeah. I think we all really, really like Afterbirth. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good expansion. You could, um, you could just come out with like an expansion that's like fifty new items. But it's yeah. clear that they are not just doing this cynically to make like more money. It actually makes right. the game substantially better. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, which is cool. And yeah. again, I, I really like what Matt had said earlier. Like the two new boss fights have like a, a level of care and design that I don't think we've seen in, in Isaac before. Like yeah. even like remember like when Blue Baby and Isaac were added, they're like the same boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're basically just the palette swap version with like very slightly different attacks. Maybe it works for theme or flavor or whatever. But um, the Ultra Greed fight, I don't know how it fits into the lore of the game, but you know the the sprites are really cool and um, you know the the art is really nice and it's a completely new fight. Same with Hush. Hush is like a super new thing for Isaac. Is just like a, a really, really tanky boss that is very bullet hell like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like it a lot. Yeah, it, it's fun just because those two particular boss fights. I don't think I've actually ever lost against Ultra Greed yet. Um, if you just learn their patterns, even with little health, as long as you are on top of your game, you can still win. Yeah, it's not like oh. unpredictable enough where you can lose. Well, it should be mentioned, though, the two new bosses both have a different uh, governing system that determines their health based on DPS, which mm-hmm. I don't know how we all feel about that. Uh, I, you can is go it and true, release... though? Well, it seems I guess to be. they don't I know mean... 100%, but that's what the first phase of both Ultra Greed, meaning the monster fight, and also the first phase of Hush I... are supposed to be for. Yeah. I think I said that yesterday, and somebody tweeted that BizSnap disproved that on stream, oh, yeah? where Maybe. he, like... Well, I know for a fact I me personally I beat Monstro just by letting Daddy Long Legs kill him and Ultra and I had Mom's knife with like a ton of damage ups and Ultra Greed still took a fuck ton of damage. Hmm. Um and I think Biz Snaps uh yes yesterday on stream the stream before uh disproved that, that that theory and was wrong. Hmm. How did he disprove it, I wonder? I'm assuming he just pecked at it with like a blue bob uh, blue baby or brother Bobby familiar, which is something yeah. you could like cheese the shit out of it. Yeah, and then yeah. if it didn't Whatever, but I don't know. No one gave me details. On well, Twitter I was I was said. theorizing that you could possibly, you know, just like if that were the case, then you could just bomb the first enemy, like bomb the monster to death, and then kind of cheese the ultra read fight that way. Which yeah. I don't know. Like if you're trying to save time, then that wouldn't really make sense to do because it would still take just about as long. But it's oh, and that's uh, another thing too. You don't have to fight monstro to fight ultra greed. If you die on the monstro fight, I think somebody uh, said in chat like there's a way to bypass the monstro fight by dying or something, and you can still fight ultra greed. Yeah. 
Okay. When I, when I sho- actually, after when I beat Ultra Greed, I used the shovel, went down another floor, didn't have to fight Monstro again, fought Ultra Greed, and he was still just as hard. Oh, that lends credence to the ARG. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> this is yeah. all I can think about uh, now. It's like, goodness. oh, well, if that's not the explanation, then yeah. ARG! I don't know. Well, I hope that the DPS determining thing isn't actually true. I'd rather have it be that it's just a set amount. Uh, just yeah. for the same reason, like, I didn't like in uh, Oblivion how, like, wherever you went, if you'd level up, everything matches your level. It just defeats the point of leveling. So. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I like that Ultra Greed and Hush are not easy to kill. I'm, I'm glad Me that, too. you know, like, with Blue Baby and with the Lamb, if you have a ridiculously overpowered run, you're, you know that you're just going to be able to melt through them no problem. But with Ultra Greed and Hush, it's no longer the case. So I'm but glad they exist. I still a complete lost run, so I kind of wish they melted a little easier yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I really think the D4 makes, uh, makes Lost a lot easier. Like, what, basically, I think it halves the amount of time, bare minimum, that it takes you to get to a good Lost Run. Because now, instead of, like, uh, don't, don't wink at me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what was that? that was um, <laughs> like, now, you instead of your formula being walk into an item room, it sucks, restart. You walk into yeah. an item room, if it sucks, you pick it up and re-roll it. So, I think it gives you, a, it makes, it cuts down a lot on getting to, like, those good synergies, yeah. or those good items you need as the Lost. Yeah. True that. I can't believe they put us in the fucking lost for the third daily challenge, man. I was I wasn't ready for that yet. I wanted that was least... a super winnable run, and I still am salty that I fucked it up. I I just I assumed that I was gonna die <laughs> just out of the gate. I just I assumed that uh, it was not gonna go well. I feel like the problem wasn't that you were the lost so much, although obviously like being able to only get hit once is pretty fucked up but uh the problem was that the third floor boss i mean even like the the four larry juniors is like a pretty tough variant yeah it is but then fighting the frail and just being like this is the first time i've ever seen this boss (laughs) so he like pokes his head up and i'm like what's up buddy and then he's just like like a laser just cuts you up and you're like okay there's one life down and then um you know, you uh, fight him again, and he pops up, so you move out of the way, and then the brimstone laser tracks you, and you're like, okay, there's two lives down. Mm. <laughs> Learning right. as we go here. Yeah. No, so I, I lost, like, like oh, six he's like a really weak pin. This is weird. And then his skin falls off, you're like, ah, oh, there's more. Yeah. All right. Mm. Shit. I actually, I really like that run, because there was an angel room, and I, like, blew, I was doing shitty, and I blew up the angel statue, re-rolled both items... And then, like, left and used Dad's key to come back in and then perthrowed them again and got, like, Sacred Heart, Guardian Angel, and the ability to fly. Oh. And I was like, I'm good! And then <laughs> I just, uh, I died. Question. Uh, yeah. mm. Do Angel Statue keys re-roll with the D4? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay. They, they, def- they then. definitely don't with the D100. Oh, they don't? Okay. No. That's weird. Huh. I'm just saying if you're mode. trying to do a Mega Satan Lost Run, like, to keep re-rolling the key pieces is going to be awful. I, I, that is fair, but I do think that probably most of the D4 use is just going to be to try to set you up on the first or yeah, second yeah. floor before you even see a deal with the angel. Because if you get to the third floor and you you have a deal with the angel and you suck, you're, you're just going to be like, ah, whatever. <laughs> I'm right. done. Most, most people, at least. Uh, that, is, that is it, I believe. Yeah, Afterbirth. It's... It's out. It's eleven bucks. Uh, we're all playing it. Yeah, we're all playing it. <laughs> yeah. No, I I echo the sentiment Ryan said though that I I really appreciate that. Not only is it you know huge and expansive and just totally ridiculous as far as expansions go in general, but also I mean the I think my favorite parts of Afterbirth are the stuff that I had no idea was coming. You know, just like changes like to the animation, for example. That yeah. that alone made it, playing the game so much more enjoyable. That was a huge factor. So. It's really good. I am extremely satisfied with it, and I think we all are. Yeah. Uh, and Just that get brings rid us. Of retrovision. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, get rid of retrovision. <laughs> make the make the smoke effect less uh, visible on the yes. burning basement. Those are the only two big things that we want to get rid of. And now, time for everybody's favorite live segment. It's Ask Roundtable. Oh boy. Today's Ask Roundtable question comes from Ian. It's kind of a longer one. He says, "This is a question for all of you." Do you think game devs... I appreciate that, by the way. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) This is a question just for Ryan. (laughs) Do you think game devs focus too much on how streamable a game is? Streamable in a sense that a game can be streamed and captivates an audience longer than it would if it were not streamed. And if not, do you think game devs even consider the impact of services like Twitch, Azubu, and Hitbox 
towards sales of their game? And does it impact indie devs more than larger companies? Thank you, Ian. This is a great question, by the way. Thank it you, is. Ian. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll start with Mathis. So, Mathis, do you think game devs focus too much on how streamable or, you know, let's even go so far as to say for YouTubers, do you think the focus do, is too they heavy? Focus, I, th I feel like that's like a, a weird way of putting it. Do they focus too much on it? Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Um, I'm Depends sure there, on there the are, dev, of course, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, but... like, of course there are going to be games that were made to be streamed and they just end up flopping in general. I mean, we see a bajillion types of, like, just as a, a YouTuber, um, instead of streaming in particular, how many cheap, terrible fucking horror games exist purely for, you know, them to be picked up by the big, the big guys to scream and freak out at? That's going to happen, and that's understandable. But I don't think devs in particular are... are focusing too much on it. In fact, I like that they're focusing on making something streamable because what I consider streamable and I think what a lot of devs consider streamable is something that's really replayable and different for everybody who plays it. Survival games is one that I will always say is, is different for everybody who plays it. Isaac is an incredibly streamable and the playable game and people can watch it, enjoy it, and then go play it themselves. So um, one of the points actually when I went to Ottawa to, to give a talk about YouTubing and stuff, one of the things I did talk about was making your game streamable and playable by YouTubers and one of the best ways to do that is having a game that is different, a different experience for everybody so that when somebody sees it being played, they can, they'll want to go out, buy it, and then play it and they'll have a different experience so this experience wasn't ruined for them via a YouTube video or a stream. Yeah. Um, I don't think devs are doing it too much. But sure, there are going to be examples where doing that ruins an idea or a game. I think you have to look at it comparatively, too. I mean, like, as I mentioned, it, de it depends on what sort of game you're looking at. It depends on the developer. So, for example, I mean, there's obviously going to be the outliers like Choice Chamber, where it's built almost entirely based around the idea of interaction with a Twitch community and with chat and things like that. Yeah. But I don't think it's becoming... Uh, you know, a prevalent enough problem to where we have to start worrying about whether or not people are trying to appeal too much to streamers and YouTubers. It's certainly not happening in the, happening in the uh, AAA realm, I don't no. think. I'm pretty sure there's, like, not even really any examples of that as far as AAA goes. I think it's, it's mostly an indie thing right now. I think indies are looking at streamers and YouTubers as a very good source of publicity and marketing that they should be working with. And I think that it certainly goes through their minds now. I think if you're an indie developer getting into the space at the moment, you are, if you're, if you're well aware of the trends, you are focused on whether or not you're gonna be able to make your game streamable or allow people to make videos of it easily. And that actually can boil down to a couple of different things, too, whether or not you are allowing people to, you know, capture in resolution settings that they prefer going into windowed mode, little things like that that can actually have a difference on the creator side of being able to, you know, create content well for it. But as far as the actual gameplay and the uh, playability of the game itself, it's I don't think it's become an issue that is very uh, uh, widespread. What do you think, Nick? Well, I would broaden the scope a little bit, and I think the framing of the question might be just a little bit off, but to address what you just said in a way, it has become a guiding force for the industry now in that we're talking about all of these MOBA games and things that are sort of specifically geared around the idea of bringing in an audience, uh, whereas, you know, several years ago it was a lot about the player's individual experience. We're now focusing on how to bring up a group of people, foster a community, and it's all about sometimes the community even at the expense of the player which is, I think, sometimes where I diverge a little bit from where the industry finds, like, the best games are going. I'm more concerned about what I'm doing individually, but I do absolutely grant games like Isaac and Choice Chamber or Jackbox Party Pack. All of those things are, like, they're right on yeah. for what they're trying to accomplish. And I think it's better served when they're just a small directed chunk of content versus you're trying to build up this whole world around something. Just keep it keep it a little small Let let the uh, let the content creator create their own community and foster an environment instead of it being more about what the vision of the company behind the experience is. Yeah. There's a very broad buzz fill laden experience that I just put on you, but I think that is sort of where I land on it. Uh, in terms of like YouTube or the AAA or, or indie space even, um, I meant to say indie space, I think the one thing that I did notice was happening for a while, these copycat games, things on Game Jolt, like when Five Nights at Freddy's was really popular, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. there was about 10 billion clones of that just because they wanted to be the one that Markiplier played. 
Yeah. And it's like that. I don't like that the whole industry can sometimes go into that little pocket realm of like, let's just all cater to one person. It just feels weird to me. But I don't think it's overwhelming anybody. I think it's just a fringe example. And I don't think it's even really a problem. It's just, it's weird to see it. That's all. Yeah, I, yeah I, we shouldn't post it as though it's an issue because I don't think it's yeah. something that inherently would become a problem. Even if or if, if it were to become more prevalent, I still don't think it would really be an issue. That well, be... it's, I, I, I kind of separate it into two, is, two issues in my own perception, at least. Mm. One of them is that, like, there, there's two different kinds of games that can kind of fall into this category. There's games that are streamable because of what Mathis was talking about, which is that they're different every time, so there's, like, some engagement to actually watching it. Yeah. Stuff like Isaac, Nuclear Throne, Keep Talking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there's stuff that is actually basically just designed to be, like, played by YouTube Let's Players. Yeah. yeah. Um, and most, yeah, that's... I think Wolfski is actually getting what I'm saying here as well. You know, YouTube bait shouldn't be considered streamability because there is stuff that is in that YouTube bait category. Whereas uh, some stuff I think is just... I, I think the games are being designed by some people with more streamability in mind, but that doesn't necessarily make them YouTube bait. But the people who are making YouTube bait, if I may use that as a, a pejorative, basically, mm. I don't think they would be making good stuff anyway. Right. <laughs> like, no, I, I kind of am with you on that, yeah. Yeah, it's not like it's mutually exclusive. Like, oh, if they weren't making, you know, Five Nights at, you know, Farm Boys or whatever, mm -hmm. they'd be making, uh, you know, the next Bastion or something like that. That's probably not true, but uh, yeah, that, that's the way I feel about it. But I do know, like, from the, the limited amount that I've talked to developers, they'll be like, yeah, you know, like all this, particularly with roguelites, they'll be like, all this stuff yeah. with roguelites has really informed my design process for the next game. Yeah. Something that you can play through multiple times and is still engaging is kind of, I think a lot of people are thinking about that more than just like a, like a linear experience now. Yeah. I, agree. I have one more point to add. Definitely. You know, um, Northern Line kind of coined this term, the triple I indie. I, I didn't think, coin uh, it, but... Well, uh, sure. <laughs> I, well, I heard it from you anyway. But I think we would all refer as uh, Soma would be one of those things, right? We'd all kind of consider yeah. that top tier yeah. indie. I was, even, yeah. I was even thinking like... Uh, Fucking what was the recent horror game that was like you know very lifelike people? Uh, PT. No, very Burning. recently people have been playing it on Twitch. Layers of Fear. No, fuck. What Get was back. it called? Uh, it was like it was like kind of a heavy rain look to it. Oh, uh, until, until dawn. dawn. Until dawn. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yep. Right. So that game in particular, I think, was a really interesting sort of bait and switch because everyone expected it to be jump scare laden freaking mm. YouTube mm. bait, essentially. Yeah. You get a few hours into it and you're like, wait a minute, if that's the kind of person that I'm trying to be for this entertainment sake, like I have to actually examine some esoteric fucking crazy yeah. philosophical stuff that is not going to come across well for my presentation. <laughs> and all of a sudden, these people have to reevaluate how they're going to present this game and yeah. still come out with an exit strategy. Mm. And I thought that was like this, the most interesting experiment to see how people react to it when they all of a sudden realize, <clears throat> I can't just feign this enthusiasm now. I've got to actually talk about some things that are kind of intelligent and deep. Yeah, <laughs> I well, have to be a smart person, <laughs> <laughs> or you could just ignore it. Also, there's, there's right. A well, that's an there. option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was uh, that was a great question again, Ian. Thank you very much for that. Like and uh, if you've got questions you'd like to ask us, don't feel like you have a bar that's been set now or anything. There's all there's all kinds of questions I'd love to. You'll never asked. reach the pinnacle of that question. <laughs> <laughs> now Ian has completely destroyed it for everybody else. No, thank you very much for all your questions. Send them in to roundtableyt at gmail dot com, and we uh, hopefully will get a chance to answer them. And now, time for everybody's favorite segment after the favorite segment. It is uh, Nick's Word Games. The first live one, which is going to be a fun thing. Well, I mean, they're all live for me, so... Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't really that much of a change. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, I'm actually going to pitch something on the fly here, Nick. What do you think about this? Should we let uh, Twitch chat play as well? You can so, let them play, just don't look at what they're saying. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah that's true. Look. So I won't look, but we'll, we'll not look, but you... We need an approved moderator or something that can catch the first instance of a correct answer, which means i got to clue them in beforehand. Yeah, but I figured maybe you could just like keep an eye on it to see if anybody guesses it while you're giving I the description. I can try. Well. You can try, yeah. We'll, just, we'll yeah. see how it goes. But yeah, we might we might play that out a little bit more in the future, see if we can't make it an official thing. Get, get like the, the Twitch points. Twitch, yeah, Twitch you points. You could earn crystal points and then turn <laughs> them into mansions. Oh, uh, that's that's another one of those preamble <laughs> jokes that nobody's gonna understand. See. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
Nick's Weird Games. Uh, we need a theme song. And uh, so I want to, since we're, since we're live again, but oh, even though it's, it's not different at all in any way, shape, or form, I want to I wanna try to give you something that you'd be, you know, on board with. Something yeah. that, you know, resonates well with your with your So we don't do like 13 takes. Yeah. Or like least... we normally do. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about a little bit of, uh, in honor actually, I think just because the the fan made one was so good. By the way, on the, uh, it's on the Twitter account as well, but please go check out. I that already get started on writing fucking... the lyrics for this one. Yeah. Well, it's going to, okay. <laughs> go check out. There is a, uh, there is a version of. Okay, it's it's on the, Limp the subreddit. Biscuits rolling. Limp biscuits rolling. That it is. Yeah, you're it's, struggling for the title there. I, I was. It's so <laughs> fucking good. You guys have to go see it. Roundtable Twitter account or Roundtable Reddit. It is so good. But uh, anyway, give me a little bit of Limp biscuit loving, will you? Limp biscuit. Right. I'll, I'll do my best with rolling, and they've already handled the chorus, so I'm gonna do okay. a verse. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. yeah. So just imagine up. that we're coming out of the. Keep rolling, 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 mm. rolling. Shh. Then it'll be like next um, weird games, weird games, weird games. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> You want to guess the next weird game? You can get yeah, someone needs to be like yes and then why. Yeah. And call and response. Right. Okay. Uh, you want to guess the next weird game? Yeah. You can't guess the next weird game. Why? Because it's from O2. And Wait, then you go like, oh, or oh like yeah, oh. okay. Uh, <laughs> and it's a Japanese RPG. You see this publisher right here? Yeah. They haven't existed since 2001. What? So you better get some Wikipedia and uh. Uh, get yourself online. He's has he got the game yet? I won't complain yet. Twenty four seven. I'm uh, never begging for a rain <laughs> check. No worries. <laughs> All right. No worries. All right, that was good. It's okay, was good. I got your back, man. We need no uh, we need another Nick's Weird Games theme song emote to spam. I don't even know what we would do there, but that's gonna have to happen for Twitch yet. Oh All man! All right, great. You guys ready for this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, we're dealing with a PS1 game today. I think we've kind of, we've transcended now or, or gone back a little bit from the we've usual done, PS2 game. We've done all game. the PS2 games. <laughs> There's more. I'm just taking a break, a yeah. little sidestep. Um, this is actually a very important game in the history of video games. For Parappa the Rapper. Excuse me? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> NFL game it is day, a, 1998. No. I think you all actually have a chance at this one. It's a first-person shooter. It came out in uh, November 30th, 1996 in North America. Oh, that was the first Call of Duty. Nope. Yep. No. Inference. Yeah. It is, okay, this is the point where you're probably going to get it right here. The developer, it's the first game by the developer Insomniac Games. Didn't they do that, like, weird... Who would later go on to create such games yeah. as Fire mm -hmm, of the Dragon mm -hmm, and Ratchet mm -hmm, and Clank yeah, and the Resistance okay. series. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Disruptor is the game, and I just said oh, it. Oh, okay. Because... Oh, <laughs> wait, what? Because I'm an idiot. No, I was just <laughs> starting to read a line, and that's honestly what happened. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, oh, yeah, no, once God. I said Insomniac, I assumed that the whole chat would flood with it, and then I just started seeing, yeah. Oh, that's great. All right. I'm sorry, I didn't give you a fair chance at that let's one. Give, let's give Twitch chat a point for that one, I guess. <laughs> I right? Twitch chat. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined! Oh, that's um, really no, so good. So the first one I see in here is probably Steger. Oh, oh nice. I think. Yeah, Steger, Steger Games. Not your friend's developer, for those not in the know. I think that's the first one. That's funny. All right, well, do you want to keep describing Disruptor? Because I'm actually kind of curious now. Yeah. So let me read the back. Uh, mm. Your mind is the ultimate weapon. Let me see the cover art, by the way. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, man, that actually looks kind of cool for a PlayStation game. I like yeah. that. As a new recruit of the elite Light Stormer Corps, you possess the latest in high-tech weaponry and training to unleash incredible amounts of firepower on the enemies of United Earth. Environments of the future. Race through 13 unique levels of heart-pounding high-speed action with 20 real-time 3D interior and exterior environments. Awesome firepower. Battle 20 intelligent and deadly enemies with an arsenal of three or nine big guns and use psionic weapons of the mind to blast the bad guys to oblivion. Enter a universe of intense action and disruptor. There you go. I'll tell you what, man. I gotta, I gotta say, you got a pretty good track record going through 20 episodes without accidentally naming yeah, the game. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I, it's just unfortunate that it had to, had to happen the I first know. time we're live on Twitch. But you I know. really, really <laughs> am conscious of that, and I usually yeah. pre-read the back of the box too. And this time, I just didn't do it on the way. Oh to man, that's that's just really funny. I failed you all. It's all right. It was good. All right. 
That is that is Nick's Weird Games, and that just about neatly wraps up our uh, first installment of Roundtable Live. Woo! Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thank you guys uh, very much for joining us live, and uh, if you didn't catch the entire show, if you just want to see it again, uh, the VOD will be up hopefully today. Bar barring no unforeseen circumstances, it should be up within like five hours, so... Uh, VOD will be up every Tuesday. We are planning on doing these every Tuesday at 11 p... Uh, p it's PST again now, right? Just because the thing yeah, shifted over. Yeah, we're in over. savings time. Okay, so yeah, Pacific Standard Time, I think. It's like standard and then daylight for whatever mm -hmm. weird reason. Uh, but yeah, that is the plan moving forward. We will hopefully be able to go live at that scheduled time. Uh, from this point on. And of course, still got to give a shout out to... Those patrons. By the way, uh, Mathis, can you give me a breakdown of what's going on with the Patreon now? Sure, I'm popping back open. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are a patron, I sent a, I sent a, a notice out to every single patron uh, of every tier to let everybody know what's going on. So we have officially removed the because there's no more live table roundtable broadcast podcast broadcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a much better name. <laughs> we've officially removed the $75 tier. In turn, I've just opened up uh, a few more slots on the $50 tier. For those who are curious, $50 tier allows you to choose uh, one topic a month that you'd like us to cover. And we'll try and go through the list and like cover like a topic uh, a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and we have removed officially the stretch goal for once a week podcast because we're fucking doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's really the only big change that's happened. Um, and if, if more things change, obviously everybody will be informed. But um, we didn't want to leave that reward tier up for something that's never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, important to note, for those of you who are at that higher tier, you want to make sure that you reselect your uh, rewards because Patreon is kind of silly as far as that's concerned, and they don't automatically reassign you to the next highest reward tier. So go into your account, make sure that you've got the proper thing selected. We'll keep you in the loop because we can see you on a list, but... Uh, just so you know that. Put a $109 tier? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the patrons we want to thank for this episode, though, include, but are not limited to, Max Spillen, Christopher Flagg, Positron, Alexander Spillman, Jonathan Graham, Julian Abelsgard, Kevin Berkland, Matt, David Bradley, Air Force Balls, General Crunk, Casey, Zur, Simf, Kevin, hashtag Chloe Deserve Better, Walker, Ignacio0891, Brizzle Brip, Justin, Gidish van der Vitt, uh, Logan Ray, Samurfet, T Page Tenor, Matthew Monahan, Adam Savage's Blowholes, Yanu Hannes Goldhan, Mediocrities, Noel Ref, and Myth Scarab. And uh, if any of you are around right now, by the way, stick around through the end of the show. We'll hang out and talk to you for a bit. Uh, as well as all the other patrons. So thank you guys very much for your continued support. And also, you probably saw it already. There is actually a uh, subscription tab underneath the video player for the Roundtable Podcast Twitch account as well. Uh, we're going to have a few cool emotes to throw on this channel very soon, ideally by next week's show. And uh, we're planning on having a, having a couple more things, as I mentioned. Ideally, we'll have like a Fire Mathis emote and like some other silly fun shit at some point. But uh, yeah, that's mostly the subscription would be if you want to like support Twitch and us at the same time. That's the best way to do that. Uh, but we still do have the Patreon page running as well if you want to support the podcast directly. So both of those things exist. And uh, that, I believe, should do it for the show proper. So thank you very much for watching. And we will see you next week here at 11 a.m. Pacific time, right? T Sounds about right. 2 p.m. EST. Or 2 p.m. EST, yeah, whatever you want to call it. See you next time. Later.